service. Oh, Jimmy, I just realized. Less.com, KOZN Bellevue. Bye bye. This is 1620. We are going to have months on Crossover, oh, killer crossover! Oh, crossover, you just crossed it over. Absolutely, another victim to the crossover. Crossed <laughs> him up and oh. sit him down. Time for the crossover, which is a segment where the shows cross over. Oh, that's what that means. Spoiler alert. Presented by Everlevel Concrete Repair, Omaha, at EverlevelConcrete.com. Josh, Jimmy, and Nick. Dude, the one you did this morning, is that the longest you've ever had a crossover for? No. Oh, no, 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 But Nick is echoing. Longest, yeah, I know. I don't know why. The longest recently, oh. if you can hear me over the echoes, longest recently, we've been doing pretty good at you know, having a normal crossover time-wise. Yeah. That didn't used to be the case. We've been better now, but today was a different story. We had uh, a lot to unpack in the 10 o'clock hour. Many, Many things were happening. What did you talk about? <laughs> Many things were happening. Matt says Michael's weird saint shirt is calling to him like the green goblin mask. <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> That's pretty funny. It's a good one. Michael is offended that I called him a P, uh, that I called him a 6A to 6B listener instead of a friend, former employee, host of Big Red Wrap Up, show contributor. Wow, many things. Guy. Host of severe overreaction. Host of severe overreaction. Nick, why do we think that the thing is echoing right now? I'm working on it. I've got hmm. no clue. Is your mic muted on the stream? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh. yeah. Everything is the way it should be. We're off to a lovely start. Mm. It's kind of a, we're doing our best impression of the Nebraska Athletic Department yeah, right now. A bit of a mess. What's going on? Yeah. What's going Everyone's on? Everyone's making the same bad joke inside of the uh, YouTube chat right now. We're saying echo over and over and over. So It's not a joke, Josh. Oh, I apologize. Oh, Adam says it's better now. Literally Nick. didn't do anything. Awesome. Good job, Nick. Great work. That's why they did not do a thing. Great work. If the, if, the, if the chat wanted to ever troll us, they would just all get together at one time and comment, echo, or can't hear you. Or audio. We would believe them. Nick would panic. It would be a whole big thing. And yet, he would be trying to fix nothing. Mm. Yeah. He would do exactly what he mean, just did. It would be a super mean joke. Nick, yeah, excellent like, work. Like, thank we you. appreciate thank you. you. We appreciate I'm you. I'm glad it worked itself out. Should we tell, where was everybody when they heard the news? Where were you when you heard the news? I was about to walk out of my house uh, to come here. Nice. To work. I was mm. driving to Bellevue University. Uh oh, Matthew says it's not fixed. Mm. Mm. It is nope. fixed now. I see Mark has hopped in in the uh, back room, so maybe Mark will be able to figure out what's going on in here. Yeah, let Mark fix it. Right, let cool. Mark fix it. So you are on your way. Oh, now Patrick says, got it. Who knows what the hell's happening? I awesome. Know. Maybe we're all getting Maybe, maybe they're trolling us. Maybe Mark's the problem. Mm. Yeah, I was uh, <laughs> just about to walk out of my, uh, out of my house. Yeah. My, I think my wife was saying something to me, and then I kind of stopped listening. Nice. <laughs> oh. I'm sorry, but yeah. Was that it a text message with a with the the tweet sent in you into you? Is that how you learned that the news? That is exactly it. Yeah, that's nice. exactly it. Nice. What about you, Josh? I assume you were running I somewhere. I was, yep. which is by the way how I also found out about Trev getting the Nebraska job three almost three years ago. So I was running. Maybe you need to stop running. But somebody said that like you need to stop <laughs> running. Um. So my headphones have been having a lot of issues with my headphones. I need new running headphones, essentially, because they stopped working. The battery died half. I mean, I was barely been out there. So I was like, well, I'm just going to play audio now off my phone. Audio. Double speed audio. So oh, don't be that trip. guy, Josh. I am that guy. I don't am be that, guy. that guy. Why wouldn't I be that What's guy? What's wrong with you? No one else wants to hear your crap. I was listening to them, though, on regular speed eventually. So I take out my phone, and I have it on Do Not Disturb while I'm on my runs, and I open it up. And I see I have 60 text messages. Whoa. And I said, hopefully no one died. And I opened it up. And the first one I saw was from Bigelow. And it just said, uh, and then it had a link to the tweet. And I said, oh, wow, this is going to change everything about today. Mm -hmm. Josh had sent me a lineup of what we we're going to talk about. And, and then minutes I, later, minutes later, it happened. And I sent it back to him. He didn't respond for like an hour. And I was like, he must be out on the trail. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. So, yeah. When did you when did you learn, Jimmy? Uh, I was uh, getting ready to go to Bellevue University, but I was also taking my kids to go to the Papillion Landing to run around, and I started also ignoring my wife, which angered her greatly. Wow, everyone's ignoring their wives. I didn't ignore mine for the record. You were ignoring we your wife. Well, I was you out. About. We talked about it though when I got home. We talked about it. That's good. Yeah, it's good. She had to opinion. Talk about she was like opining. This. I was opining myself. No. My wife may not know right now. Still to this moment. <laughs> yeah, it's possible. The opine people. I love your wife's Twitter feed because it is the exact opposite of you. 
It's like she yes. tweets about stuff that is like that reading ha- books. That yes, she's like I lo- I read a book. <laughs> she watches like, reality yeah. TV. Yeah, a lot yeah. of Bachelor tweets. Yeah. She goes. Uh, Does she play Fantasy Bachelor? No, I don't no. know what that is. Uh, I only know what that is because of George Norwood, who used to work here. He was like big R. into R. it. It's like fantasy football, but it's like for the Bachelor. That makes sense, I guess. Yeah. Um, no, she like she usually has like a private Twitter account. But when the bachelor comes on, she goes unprivate so the bachelor community could see all of her bachelor tweets mm. and retweets. She's that. got takes. She's like addicted to the to the bachelor. Is she big tweets. on bachelor Twitter? Yeah, she's huge on bachelor. Twitter. People retweet her frequently. Yeah, she does numbers on oh. bachelor nights for real. Yeah, good for her. Uh, Matt good says time. everyone is into ignoring their wives today. Poll question: yeah. Have you poll, ignored your wife poll, today? Poll question: Have you been ignoring your wife today? Nice. Nick, how did you learn the news about Trev? Nick? Have you ignored your wife today? I have not. Nick, ignored are you my married? Wife. No. Congrats. Oh uh, man! First, he fixed the stream, and now he's married. I was, I was with my significant other when I learned the news, though. We were oh. driving back from somewhere, and I was on Twitter. Did you ignore her? And I'm like, oh, hey, did you guys have breakfast today? We did not have breakfast today. Oh. Nice. Did you have lunch? <laughs> yeah, the new, news came down so early, Nick. I didn't see it. I wasn't on my phone, and I didn't see it until like eleven. Oh, okay. so it was late. Nice. I just wasn't on my phone. I was doing other things. Josh Hodson wants to know what time you found out. Like 11.30-ish? I don't oh, know. Okay. Uh, a little late. Aaron, my friend Aaron, texts in. Connor, I was literally about to leave, and my, my wife said, Hey, I have something we need to discuss. I literally heard almost none of it because my phone was blowing up. <laughs> Hope I still have a wife when I get home. Mm. Literally not joking about her needing to say something important. I think it was about licensing a vehicle. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. People wow. have been ignoring their wives big time today. Wow. Yeah. This is a big ignore your wife day. Get your wife flowers mm. tonight. My, my wife is like laying out like what she's going to do with the kids for the rest of the week. And I, you were like, don't I care. Could, I could not tell you. What Jay Cutler meme. Me. Trent don't needs to do care. something. He needs to say what he's doing so we can stop ignoring our wives and it can yeah. just be over with. <laughs> you know, you know why the divorce rate is so high in America? Because Trev, Trev. Alberts. Yes. Damn it, Trev. Uh, by the way, Doug Ewald, he's just talking up a storm right now he loves talking to people give doug a podcast he has told amy just that as of 145 so this is the up to the minute news 16 minutes ago the decision is still to be made mm. the decision is still to be he's made he's busy he's busy <laughs> Good one, well Jake. done nick hey, he's running an athletic department guys mm. <laughs> got stuff to do so that's the latest i love this just drag it out to about five o'clock should we need, you know, you guys have weird predictions on your board like oh, that one. Georgetown one. wins two more games this season. Yeah, Josh nailed that. Good work, Josh. Uh, let's, the poll. It's time to, we, you know, the Mount Happer. I mean, just you want to talk about an all-time. Bad bad call by me. Yeah. It, we I mean, just passed the date earlier yeah. this week. <laughs> yeah. yeah. there is. It's no... been gone for a month. All right. So. Time. Yes. Time of Trev's now, next do we, week. First of all, do we all think it's today? Yes. Do we think we learn today? There's no well, finality one way or the other. That's what I'm asking. Yes. Will we learn? I was going to no. say there's no way this goes till tomorrow, but if one university was going to do it, it'd be this one. So Nick says it's not I going to end today. It won't end today. I take Nick. So go ahead, wow. Nick, since you're so sure about this. You give us your day, Nick. Give us your time. Of, uh, now, what, what's the official thing that we're looking for? Trev's next tweet? I was going to say. The official announcement. Great. Okay, so what are we looking for here? A press release. A press release from Texas A and M, or are we looking for like well, the official report from Pete Thamel? You know, like I, if if it's if if a, if he doesn't go, A and M's not going to say anything. So I think it would have to just be the announcement, right? Mm. When, I would say that the, our next correspondence would probably be a Trev tweet. Yeah, a Trev. Tweet, I think you're right. Right. Either that he's staying here or that he's saying goodbye to here. I love Nebraska. Yeah. That's what he'll see, tweet, something like that. <laughs> that is a little ambiguous. I love Any, any, anybody else hope if he stays, he just tweets out Leonardo DiCaprio and Wolf of Wall Street. That'd be that, pretty good. That sure, that would count, I think. <laughs> so that's what we we are going off of the, the next Trev Albert tweet or an official release from A&M. Because yes. that could also that happen. Fair. If he stays, fair, yeah. he's going to announce it. Um, what color should I write this in? Uh, yeah, blue. the blue, it's falling apart. Look it's, at how it should be green, right? Because it's like, all about the money. It looks like trash. Okay, green. Green it is. All right. Nick. So, Nick, tomorrow morning. What time? Uh, 10 a.m. ish. 10 a.m. ish. Mm. Nope. 10 a.m. what? Fine. 10 a.m. 10 a.m. on the dot. 3 14 at 10 a.m. Josh? I think we're going to learn tomorrow. today. And I'm going to be pessimistic and say we learn after we log off, which is great for you, Jimmy, because you have oh, a show no. tonight. Oh, no. And we are not preempting you. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, crap. Are, we're not going to have to preempt. What day is today? 3 what? 13. 3 13. So tomorrow will be 3 14. 
Yeah, what are the rules about? We have a new Tomorrow's boss now. Friday. I don't know what the rules yeah. are about this big. Of, I mean, we've been covering it all day. If, if he announces we're going to be on the air until seven tonight, I, I, I'm kind of. I, asking. Think, I think Jimmy Allen and John Schreiner can can handle. It. I think so too, Mark. I agree with Jimmy. <laughs> they can handle it. I'm going to be pessimistic and say it happens after our show. I'm going to say six oh five. Wow! Right so, after our show, I say seriously, it, that's happened before. It we have had news come yeah. down literally. Yes, it at, has. <laughs> literally, as uh, the show. I ends. am more optimistic than most. I will say three thirty-five. Whoa, Jimmy says within the happens, next hour and a half. Jimmy says it happens before our interview with John Bishop at three fifty. John Bishop, at he's John cool. Bishop. We should get. Sorry, what'd you say? Three thirty-five. Wow, it's like Jimmy is Happer's wife. He was ignoring him. <laughs> Conspiracy, Jimmy. Oh, do you read? I thought you Jimmy? wrote Connor. <laughs> Nice. All right, Happer. You gonna? I feel. I feel like Happer is gonna go in between Jimmy and I. Yeah, he's gonna bet one dollar. So he's gonna say it's it's definitely before the end of the show. So Nick, do you think he's staying or do you think he's going? I think he's going. Yeah, me too. Does anybody in here think he's staying? I think he's staying just because of how long it's Classic taken. Classic Jimmy. This yeah. is great, Jimmy. I, this is awesome. You know, I thought that when this came out, I thought there was zero percent chance. The fact that they've gotten until two o'clock after this came out, it's been almost five hours. There's no way he's going now. I mean, there's no, there's way, no way he's going Put it now. On the board. There's no Get way. Get the egg. This is Josh Odson saying there is no path <laughs> to Nebraska winning a basketball game. And yet there was a path. There was. Man, Jimmy. You the, are, you you are a wild guy. Inside PB. Well, listen, if this is a done deal and you, you find out that long ago that th that's happening, what would be the reason for staying? It took us 10 minutes to get a Jimmy take. It really somebody somebody just had emailed in. I can't wait to hear the brilliant takes Jimmy is going to have on the Trev situation. We need to start setting lines on Jimmy takes. Yeah, yeah um, I think the always take the. I other. I'm actually currently not convinced one way or the other. No, oh, okay. I thought you were going to say you're on Jimmy's side. I, I am technically on both of your sides. Wow. Oh, Typical. both sides. Have John's her? not here, Which but is we got both sides. Also <laughs> classic me. So we we have a classic Josh, yep. I mean, hater, pessimistic. Think about classic it. Jimmy, conspiracy. The, the way it gets announced, sticks to his done, guns, get done out of the way. And classic me doing both yeah. sides. Perfect. Mm -hmm. You and John, I wouldn't want to hear what a radio show with you guys would sound like because you, we, we would, would agree. You would never have an opinion. You would agree, but you would also disagree. You just wouldn't have anything. It'd be like the neutral planet from Futurama, which I, actually, I know you guys don't know about, but that's that's hilarious. an interesting dynamic. I wonder how that would go. <laughs> Yeah, this is fire. Two guys who can't have a take one way or the other. Oh, hey. <laughs> I have takes. I have takes. Uh, back to back comments. First from Theo. Hello, Theo. Oh, no. Jimmy gets it. Oh, the next man. comment from Dave Fight, the Jimmy Allen curse. So back to back. Oh, back to back. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. At least Theo's on your side. Yeah, you have Theo. You have Theo, yeah, Jimmy. Thanks, Theo. It's nice to Jimmy have Theo, Theo standing. Handshaking. Yeah, handshake mm -hmm. meme indeed. Yeah. Wow. Jordan says, I agree with Jimmy. It's been too damn quiet since 9 a.m. Because the news came out that they were expected to hire him, that the deal was done, mm -hmm. and then nothing. What would the other reasoning be for the nothing? If As someone who has had a deal done to sign his contract, but also sometimes it just takes time to sign contracts. But yeah, wouldn't you? Would, if you were Trev, wouldn't you want to be like, it's done. I'm gone. Thank you for Nebraska. Thank you, Nebraska, for your time. The fax has been Thank sent. you for your service. Well, Thank I you mean, service. you can report that. You can report that it's being finalized at any stage of the negotiations. Mm. Right. But what benefit? Like, it only hurts Trev to let this thing lie until, for like, for the, there's literally no reason to do it. It, it hurts Trev. You don't think so? I don't know how. Whether he comes Trev. back or not, like, it, it, it's, he's leaving his alma mater in a situation where you have people that still resent him to some degree for the UNO wrestling football thing. I don't know if you heard about this, Trev Alberts canceled football wrestling at UNO. Oh. And, and then you have this situation now where you're going to have some people that will never forgive him for this. And if he takes even longer and yeah, then but says, if he leaves, I'm gone anyway, it's, it's just I mean, people nothing. are going to, there's no are... benefit to it. There's no well, pe people are gonna hate him if he yeah. leaves, no matter yeah. what. Right, but like, do you think people will be more angry if he waits until six to announce it versus just doing it now? I I think if he comes back and he continues to wait, yeah, I think the, I think he's losing people as it goes along. Like either either you you say something now and just get it out of the way, and or, oh, I thought you were talking about if he leaves. No, if if if, if he stays, like I I just don't like when we're talking about the time. I don't understand what the point of waiting is. If a you are planning on leaving, and b well, if you're coming back. I mean, you don't think a negotiation would be done if they're sending this tweet out? And, and... No. What? No. No. I mean, 
Unless you're negotiating staying. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, but you okay. think he's staying? I'm so confused. I feel like you're arguing the opposite point right no, now. No, no, no. This I, is what he does. <laughs> no, Both sides I, I, Jimmy. The college game isn't coming out, but maybe it is. No, I said mm. I wanted to. I just didn't think it was. That's a completely different. Thing. Mm. I, I'm just saying, if, if what, like, what is the the, benefit, the only benefit of waiting is if you're trying to get more money from Nebraska. But at the same time, you have to think on the flip side. You kind of got this job because of what you do as a fundraiser, and how likely you're going to be able to continue getting people to trust you if the longer you wait in this situation. Yeah, I just don't think it's about money at all. Oh, I, I don't think so either. But There's I think a- if you're going to stay. You need to think about the long term and get this done as quickly as possible for your benefit. Chris in Montana says, is the point of waiting to announce maybe to get his family out of town? Wow. Oh. Sheesh, Chris in Montana. Yikes. That's a put, trip folks, to negative town. Put, put the pitchforks away. Uh, Jed <laughs> says, I did not think Trev was leaving until Jimmy said he was staying. <laughs> I don't think him leaving makes any sense at all outside of the power structure at the university system. But if Jimmy says he is staying, then I have to believe he is leaving. Wow. <laughs> You're forced to. It really yeah. it's quite the quite the choice. Uh back to the uh ignoring your wife discussion. Yeah, please. Jack Mitchell has tweeted in. Hi Jack. Uh and I've texted with Jack today. Um and he's on vacation. He says imagine your wife talking to you on vacation about like fun stuff and being on phone lock. I think it means all yeah, the time. so I, I read this tweet and I felt like I was kind of having a stroke yeah. as I was reading it. Is so Jack once again, talk to text guy. It no, says, Jack, Jack, Jack reads, just types really fast. And he just uh, reads the, the future yeah. part of the text yeah. before. Like he, he's told me about how he reads text messages. He just yeah. like skips stuff. Yeah. It's like, just read the text. Imagine your wife talking to you on vacation about like fun stuff and just being on phone lock. Yeah. I think he means lock like all the like time. phone lock. Like you're just like, locked, locked in like, your yeah, phone. That's yeah. what I interpreted it. I think and it's a tough look. I don't think. I mean, he, I, I think we've all had it and fun stuff, not like fun stuff. Have you ever been on your? Have you ever been on phone lock on vacation? Uh, vacation because stuff was happening. I don't think I have. So, I, I don't know. I mean, like when I've been out of town, have I been on my phone? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I was actually on vacation. I listened to your old show with Schaefer actually. Uh, the day that the news came down about Frost and the NCA investigating. So we woke up to that news. We were going up into, I always forget if it's, is it Nederland or Nederland uh, in, in Colorado? Great brewery up in, up there. Never Not in root. Oh. Never we talked about this place. What is that? Adjective verb or whatever. Yeah. Uh, anyway, great spot. Well, is we same band that did uh, send me on my way. <laughs> we listened to copious, root. copious amounts of segments. I think we downloaded your whole show that day. And so I was, messing around on my phone that day just to find out like hey what's going on with the last time we went on the last time we went on vacation uh we went to the uh the florida panhandle but game one of the nba finals featuring the nuggets and the heat was on oh and so i was (laughs) i was a little dialed in i was gonna think about that all day long hell yeah everybody i see i think was happy to watch the watch the basketball game with us so it wasn't that crazy pensacola Zach says uh, the area, not uh, specifically Pensacola. Zach says maybe AM leaked this as a way to force Trev's hand. Mm. Would be a bad idea. See, now here's, I, don't, I don't know how great of a look that would be for you. So here's I'm going to give my some of my uh, journalism takes on this. When I saw, and I guess you know, I never clicked in the link. Was it Zwarneman? Brent? Was it Brent Zwarneman or whatever it that, was? That yeah, the Houston Chronicle right. guy. Yeah. That guy nails stuff. He was the first one to have the the Oklahoma and Texas news. He was. So like. When he says that, and honestly, when Pete Thamel says targeting and when Dellinger finalizing, they're all using the exact verbiage of it's done, you know? And so when, when I see that stuff, I think it's, it's you know, they're just it's dotting done. I's but, and crossing but, T's. Okay, so we, I mean, we can go journalism and like how it works a little bit. Like when those reporters get that information, they're getting it from Texas A&M. The source, yeah. Given that it started from a Houston Chronicle reporter, 100%. They're getting it from Texas A&M. So if Texas, didn't get it from Nebraska. So if Texas A&M is wanting people to believe it's done, then they'll tell people that they believe that it's done. And maybe Trev, you know, or that it was trending to be done. Yeah, and there may be that outside chance that Trev was trying to dot some I's and cross some T's before he let people know, too. Like, hey, let me get my my house in order before we. I, the I word I would agree with you that, and I would say Trev is probably not happy with how the day Correct. has unfolded. The word that I always look for when stuff like that gets reported is agreed. Agreed is a pretty important word. Yeah. Um, because if you agree, then 
It doesn't matter what the final dots and the eyes and the in the cross. Well, isn't the that what the, the was that the Thamel one where it was like agreed to? It was like five years and it had like that stuff. I don't right? know that I've seen the word agreed. Yet okay, let me find today. It. Let me find that Pete Thamel. Not that. the agree boy. Yeah. Mm. Finalizing is different. And uh, now we're really split. We're par- yes, we're yeah. very much parsing. Yeah. We're very much parsing. All right. So the so he said per sources. Trev Alberts' expected deal with Texas A&M will be a five-year deal that puts him near the top of the SEC and among the top 10 athletic directors nationally. See, and again, the, even that, you're right. It does not say agree. He is not an agree boy. But, man, to have five-year contract, top 10 nationally. Yeah, that like money that, sorted out. Whee! And the spot in the SEC. Man, I just, like, I, I know a lot of this is to do with everything that's going on and, and the power structure at Nebraska, but, like, there's another university where it's as big of a show, like, Texas A&M's got to be right there. Like, I know at least they have a president. Yeah, it's not like they're a normal a, place. Yeah, but it's just like, are, are you trading in one circus They have a for cemetery another? for their dogs. Like, that place is crazy. Cults. Yeah. It's a cult. They yeah. are some freaking weirdos down in college super Station. weird. I know we're weird up here, but they are it, it do, I know you guys talked, Johnny see, football. I know you guys they talked about this on your Johnny show, football. but it does have, like, Dana Altman vibes where it's like, hey, sure you What's their version of Pig Suey that will bring him home? The Gig Midnight, Gig the, the the midnight Yell? yell? Yeah, we'll go do the Midnight Yell with all those guys in overalls like, and he'll say eh, i'm well, good and yeah, it doesn't feel like some trev might be into it, I, i've just done some brief checking into what's what the what the tenor is down there they're crazy and the response is who is this guy oh, what yeah, has he ever boards, done is he is he, is he any him. good at anything yeah i saw that that was going on down they're there. nuts yeah they're pretty crazy they're psycho pedro a great point on getting inside information he says hi guys josh since everyone is streaming now we can't depend on the cable installation guys anymore <laughs> yeah people forget oh, yeah. <laughs> that uh they were installing bob davies cable but now you don't need bob davies cable installed he would just sign up for youtube tv people forget about the cable installers yeah. union yeah, it is a lot easier to watch television mm. in 2024 than it was in 2004 and mm. yeah, do you remember those days nick Barely. 2004? I was seven. Yeah, you were seven years old. Also, Star Wars Fiend tried to spell Anakin's name, but he spelt it wrong, so that's a tough look for Star Wars Fiend. Oh, wow. no! He said, Trev is Anakin walking into the Jedi Temple. Oh, my gosh! <laughs> younglings? He's gonna kill younglings? I mean, Memorial Stadium and slaying down the younglings. Younglings? Anakin, you killed Rule younglings! Rule Dylan, Frank White, North Stadium, he's slaying them all Watson, Photoshop this stat. Dude, he said so many today. I want... I want Trev as Anakin, and I want the younglings as who do we want the younglings? Oh, it says, I don't Rule, even know Dylan, what you're talking Frank, about. So Anakin killed White. a bunch of little kids. A bunch of who children. are the little kids that Trev would be chopping down with a lightsaber in his hand? Dylan Matt Riola. Rule, Dylan yeah. Riola. Young what about Dylan. Mr. Banks? <gasps> Not Mr. Re- Banks. Uh, speaking of Dylan, Star Wars fiend did say earlier, gone. Dylan is gone. Dylan. You can kiss any winning season after next year out. I don't think. Dylan was coming here because of Trev. But what if Matt Rule leaves? Matt, Matt Rule. Oh. What if Matt? I had somebody say to me earlier. Matt Rule to AM? That was basically like Nebraska is in the same place as Minnesota. People need to realize that this is now a stepping stone job, like officially. Like it's time to give up on expecting good things. And I was like, wow, I've had lunch today. And now <laughs> yeah, I'm I know. It's, brought a, it's, down. it's quite the deep question to think about it for something that hasn't happened yet. Yeah. But we, I'm sure we'll get there at some point. Husker Kutcher says the younglings are the people in South Stadium. <laughs> oh, yeah. Johnny Pig says Trev would be striking down UNO wrestlers. <laughs> oh. Yeah. There you go. Well, and the UNO Johnny, football program. Johnny Pig, he did that already. <laughs> With this, now, this is a, this is a new, new story. Oh, list. so those were the sand, the, can I? Whoa. Nick, <laughs> can I say you, that? What were you going to say? <laughs> the Tuscan Raiders wow. is the UNO What were you going to say? The team. sand what? I was going to say sand people. And I'm like, well, Whoa, that seems weird, Nick. but that's also what they called them. Like, it's fictional. It's okay. It's a, it's a slur in their universe, but not ours. <laughs> Poll question. Are you allowed to say slurs in the Star Wars universe? <laughs> you say Star Wars slurs. Mm. <laughs> Do you think Star Wars is saying our slurs yeah great question <laughs> great question great question i don't know over in star wars like are, are mm. our slurs their slurs mm. and it, apparently not because well i don't know mildly richard mm. i believe this is even fits says <gasps> well rule, even, even fits well rule said that trev and carter were the major reasons for taking the job dot dot space dot yes <laughs> he put a space in between wow the is that and more code dot. i don't know if that's an ellipsis or not it's important extra pause Yep, extra pause. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, 
Everything's up in the air if Trev's not here. For sure. For sure. I don't want to think about this. It's I don't think you have a choice. I just you're right. This yeah. is my it's my job <laughs> I think actually we have to think, to think about, about this. this. Yeah, I he, was on a podcast recently with the guy from UNL, John Schrader, instructor. Mm-hmm. And I basically at the end was whining about how I've never gotten to cover a good football program and how like it's my dream someday. Mm. And I was like, yeah, everything that seems to so be nice. going you on. Being a radio host from Tuscaloosa the last ten years. Honestly, it probably would got, get a little bit hard at some point. Like, oh, cool, they won again. Like, you yeah, know, pretty boring. Sometimes things can be too good. Like, what do you write about? We only beat the Citadel fifty-seven to two. Mm. Uh, Four hundred two texture says nerf herders. Yeah, Nick, are we allowed to say nerf herders on the radio? Scruffy nerf herders. I feel like nerf herders a soft. A soft one, you know? Mm. It's a soft swear. Reminds me of there was this Star Wars. It was called Star Wars Gangster Rap video oh, back yeah. when I was in high school. Yeah. Ban- Bantha fodder, though. I think that one's a... We're not allowed to say that. I think if we were on radio in Star Wars, we couldn't say... The Star Wars... The Space FCC wouldn't like that. Mm. Uh, Matt writes, RIP the Red Carpet Kids. Oh. That's... Oh. Those are the younglings! Those are there the younglings. He's no. chopping them down. They're on the red carpet. Is so great for Nebraska. Master Trev. Star Wars fiend. I don't know how yet, but I, I know this is somehow John Bishop's fault. Yeah, that jerk. He's not even here today for yeah. this news. He's tweeting, I love America, <laughs> while this news is breaking and everything's yeah. falling apart. Look at the statue of It's like of 11 Liberty. o'clock. Here's the statue of yeah. Liberty. I'm on a boat right I'm now. I'm sharing a slice of pizza with a giant rat. Yeah. Whole question, did, does John, John Bishop know? <laughs> oh, John knows. There's no way John doesn't know. John, right? John probably hopped on one of those like rip off tour boats that takes you around the island and just put on his dad hat with this funny old sunglasses. John and does just, have funny sunglasses. Just, just took a bunch of pictures of the Statue of Liberty and said, look and look at this. It's America. One I, got. I John, love America. <laughs> meanwhile, we're in hell. Ah, let, everything's falling apart. Let me know if I'm off base here. Right. John loves chaos, right? Oh, yes. No, Nick. <laughs> so I can imagine he's just kicking his feet. Oh, he knew what he was it's doing. Like, ha, ha, ha. He, so I got a text. He just, he just tweets out, "Let's go, Jay." <laughs> I got a text from somebody. And, gosh, I had so many freaking texts today. Uh, uh, I'm Josh. I'm popular. Is this a bit because he's weird, or is this classic John not paying attention to the news or his timeline? Well, John no, is very this well. This is aware. intentional. Yeah, very it definitely. Intentional. It definitely was. By the way, when John doesn't want to be aware of something, he will have to purposefully not be aware of John's- it, like he did for that football game that one mm-hmm. time. But other than that, he knows. John's yeah. being a silly little nerf herder. Yes, yeah. he is. Yes. I he, also got he a, did tweet out like a weird Steve Peterson at a car lot meme and said waiting by his phone. <laughs> the, he knows what he's doing. <laughs> mm-hmm. I did get a text from somebody else that said, just remember, it's never so bad at Nebraska that it can't get a little worse. That's and I was like, true. Damn, damn, that's good mm-hmm. and true. It's basically the Marianas Trench at this point. Tell us about that, Nick. It's the deepest canyon uh, in the world. Nice Sam, Sam, Sam McEwen just Deep. tweeted out update about the Trev Albert story with some important context, at least with the salary money is not an issue for Nebraska, which built something specific into Trev's contract. Yeah, so, we knew that. I don't know if that means they're like, hey, I think that was a part of the him and Amy or I think that was that's what they're trying to figure out. I got yeah, you. So. All right. Well, this is good. Yeah, this is great. All right, we have our timestamps. Maybe it's a hostage situation. Like, if you leave us, we're going to explode Herbie. Oh, my gosh. Nick. What? The, the person that, inside Herbie, the, just the, Herbie. The mutilated Muppet version of him, it might not be a bad look. It's just going to oh, be... Trev, Trev created that guy. He, oh? He he invented new Herbie. That's true. The, the guy with the tractor and the t-shirt Gatlin gun? The what finger... Oh, man. So when Trev Herbie. leaves, are we bringing back the OK guy? We're bringing exactly. back problematic Herbie. We're yeah. taking 3%. it back. We're taking the OK sign back. What? I call it 3% Herbie. Who, who did this offend, by the way? What? Uh, it's a sign for white power. It's a white supremacist thing. Perfect. Yeah, Indeed it is. Which, I mean, it kind of fits with Herbie. <laughs> it kind of does. <laughs> Blonde hair, uh, blue remember eyed. Remember John's whole Herbie bit, how he lives on a farm and he calls his wife mother. But he's somehow not problematic. Was Herbie also ignoring his wife today? Definitely. 100%. Where, where Definitely. was Herbie on January 6th? Mm. Herbie, come in for lunch. Mm. Uh, no, thank you. I got to pay attention to the Trev Alberts news on my radio. Odson has uh, delivered the graphic as we say goodbye to you. Uh, Happer and uh, Trev holding a lightsaber. And the younglings have Husker shirts on. Mm. I love watching the Huskers with daddy. That's what the shirts say. <laughs> <laughs> I want one of those shirts. <laughs> Triple B. I love watching the Huskers with dad. That is funny. Oh, hey, man. daddy's home. Lick, lick, lick. lick. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, All gentlemen, right. enjoy your uh, enjoy your afternoons. Yep. 
Indeed. Should be fun. The positive thing about doing positive all boys. of that prep. The positive boys. I mean, look, we still have a show to do tomorrow. Yeah. So I, we can, whatever we don't use today, I'm just going to go copy, paste, 3 14. Oh, like what day of the week is it today? Wednesday. Somehow Wednesday. it's only Wednesday. Dude. Are we, are we, we have to punt dumb debates today. Great question, Nick. Right. We will see what the day brings. Is oh, that a dumb debate? But if, Nick, if the news comes down when Happer says it does at 4 45, the debates shall be indeed punted. Damn. Yeah. But you will have already started dumb debates. Huh. Yeah, that, <laughs> dumb debates <laughs> is already scheduled. <laughs> we can't just punt dumb it. Deep. And then here comes the news. <laughs> that Trevor that has happened before. We punted dumb debates with Trev News at the very end of last year when That's that true. flat water free press story we came out. 10 minutes of dumb debates. And then we're like, we're nope. like, never mind. Time to move on from dumb debates. Time to watch the Huskers with Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope it hey, all Daddy lands in the, right, lick, lick. Uh, in the right place for you guys today. Dapper, I, I hope wish you have you a good great luck. day. There was cookies in the break room, by the way. Really? There's I'm pasta in there now, too. I saw that. I'm going to get some. Oh, I'm interested in that, too. I'm going to get some cold pasta. Yeah, well, I had lunch, but I was like, I'm not going to turn down a cookie. All right, folks. Bye, Hap. Bye, Bye. Hap. That's the Connor Happer. That's the Connor Happer. That's Connor Happer of the Connor Happer Show. That was the crossover powered by Ever Level Concrete Repair in Omont. EverLevelConcrete.com program. Jimmy Allen, Josh Peterson, Nick Grimm begins next here on 1620 The Zone. ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. It's mulch better at Lanahaw. Planning to wake up your tired yard for spring? Make your landscape the envy of the neighborhood with mulch from Lanahaw's Garden Center, where quality is always a priority. Convenient pickup or delivery available. Lanahaw Nurseries, 192nd and Center. When it comes to concrete repair, Everlevel has some serious game. Coach Greg McDermott here to coach you on why you should choose Everlevel Concrete Repair. They've got the fundamentals to fix your cracked and uneven concrete, and their products will give you the best defense against future damage. It's a fraction of the price compared to replacement, and their solutions come with a long-term transferable warranty. Working with Everlevel is a slam dunk. Call Everlevel Concrete Repair today for your free inspection. 
Hi, friends. Kent Pavelka, courtside, getting ready for this year's matchup between the average roofing companies and the rooferees at John Higgins Weather Guard. The average roofers are just that, average at best, not very impressive. The rooferees, above and beyond the opponent, more dependable, service that exceeds the norm, good sportsmanship, fairness, and integrity. You know them, you love them, and they're ready to win for you. Make the right call with John Higgins Weather Guard. It's tip-off time with the rooferees at John Higgins Weather Guard. Make the right call. Hi, this is Doug Nodgard with Equitable Bank. Great service never goes out of style. When the digital age dawned, many said computers would be able to handle many of the interactions that used to take a person. Boy, were they wrong. How many times have you called your bank and gotten a recording to press one or two? Not at Equitable. Not only does Equitable answer your call in the first ring, it's answered by a human being. That's because Equitable Bank values its customers. Equitable Bank, we take banking personally, member FDIC. Thanks for calling Discover. This is Gabby. Hey, Gabby. It's Jennifer Coolidge. Hi. Um, I'm so glad I reached you at 2 a.m. Oh, of course. Anyone with a Discover card can call and talk to a real person 24-7. Now, how can I help? Yeah, I used my Discover card to buy these yellow pleather pajamas, and I'm just not sure I'm pulling them off. 24-7 U.S.-based customer service. It pays to Discover. Limitations apply. Learn more at discover.com slash credit card. This edition of Unsportsmanlike Conduct on 1620 The Zone is proudly presented by Union Bank and Trust. The program starts now. K-O-Z-N. Unsportsmanlike Conduct on 1620 The Zone. Husker Athletics, Creighton, and yes, you went a moment they'll give you your fix they're on every day from two until six spend your afternoons with john josh and nick john josh and nick nick Uh, A text coming in from the 402 reads. Maybe Trev got too much bleep about the block letter N for baseball. Oh. People don't like it. No, they we really don't. Nobody does. Everybody on this Wednesday, you know the drill. It's Unsportsmanlike Conduct on 1620 The Zone, 1620thezone.com, 1620thezone TV, and we appreciate all of you who are joining us, whether it's there, whether it's the app, whether it's the good old fashioned radio. Ah, uh, what would life be? I, I don't know what it would be. I was listening to both the podcast and the radio on the way in today. I was catching up on early parts of the Happer show, listening live later. I even listened on the app. I think I took in. The Connor Happer show and and also the crossover with uh, Gary and Nick in any in every way that I possibly could today. Uh, I thought that they did great job with their coverage as the uh, news broke earlier on. And uh, if you missed any of that, obviously go check the radio replays. Jimmy Allen, the day has arrived. How are you? I'm dude. It's one of those. It's one of those days where we're just blessed to be able to do this. You know what I mean? Where it's like, all right, let's dive into this. Let's let's get to the ins, the outs, the whys, the why nots. And who wins, who loses in this situation? The ends. The, the ends and, and the ends. Yeah. So, uh, it's Trev Albert's end. We will be doing that throughout the show today. We have uh, put the odds on the board for what time the news will break. No matter what time it breaks, we will obviously have you covered. Let's take a look at the Grum Down Grum for down. the program this afternoon, brought to you by the Rooferies, John Higgins Weather Guard. But might as well say it at the top, throw out everything. We're talking Trev. Uh, no, seriously, Nick, do you have anything else that you'd want to discuss today? Sorry. Wow. Yeah. Maybe we could get to it in content. Sad. Later on. Are we going to have content today? Uh, great question. That yes. Is correct. I w- I promise. I can't promise dumb debates, but I can promise content now, at the top of the segment. You said, you know, the drill, but I don't know if any of us know the drill. Uh, for today. We know the drill. Yeah, you know, the drill it's crazy crap's topic. happening. We, yeah, your calls, your emails, your tweets. We'll give you that, that rundown in just a moment. Uh, live from New York. It's John Bishop. John's going to join us at 3.50 today. 
Uh, this was originally, I did all my basketball prep. I was yeah. diving into stuff. Uh, we were going to talk to him about the Creighton matchup with somebody tomorrow. Um, but no, we are, we, I mean, we'll probably talk about that, but obviously John has been covering Husker athletics in some capacity for, he wouldn't want me to say this, but for close to 30 years Decades. now, it's been a long time. <laughs> it's been a while. Some would say it's been a while. So, uh, we'll talk about that and we'll talk a little Jay's hoops with him. Uh, Brian Christofferson. Nice kid. Nick BC will join us at the bottom of the four o'clock hour. I don't even know if I, you told you know. me. I, okay. I, I saw the lineup. All right. Perfect. Good. BC is going to join us. Uh, I'm in the know. Obviously, we can uh, follow up with him on what he has learned. And by that point, it'll be two hours from now. So who knows what else will break? Look, we had a lot of other stuff, and it's on here now. Uh, Nick Saban, he has some takes. Yeah, you said nice get Nick after you said Brian Christopher. <laughs> and then I saw Nick Saban. I You're was like, like wait a second, what? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> you did not tell me this. We so have some, we're friends. Yeah, yeah. You, you, we both have You're the same both of Nick. I yes. went through the process of screenshotting video, uploading the video. I was like, this is going to be sweet. We have Scott Van Pelt opining. Uh, if we don't get to that today, we can certainly get that tomorrow. Uh, Jimmy Allen, conspiracy Jimmy himself, yesterday was all a flutter about money hand memes or whatever you want to call them. Johnny Manziel-esque. Yeah. Uh, Rudy Gobert, though, has uh, asserted some things with the uh, refs in the NBA. Again, a topic that perhaps we will say for tomorrow. Uh, if not, we can get to it today. And we do have it on the rundown. Hashtag Rundown. dumb debates. Text from the 402 writes, I hope Jimmy didn't book any guests today. Uh, we're still waiting here on that. All right. So Nikki's struggling <laughs> even at booking the guests. It's this not is a tough happening look. today. This is why I do it, Jimmy. This is probably the, the guest I was trying to book. Maybe the person we would want on this situation because mm -hmm. of his previous job. Uh, he certainly would have some opinions about that. 402-951-1620 is the phone number. Whether you want to call us, whether you want to text us, you can reach out there. That is the 42 degrees of source. Hotline by your mom's house. You can also find us on the JTEC Construction Zone Twitter feed at USC1620. Uh, hit us up there, uh, wherever you are. Let us know and uh, give us your thoughts today. And also you can uh, email into the Equitable Bank inbox, josh at 1620thezone.com. Uh, we know that you have a lot of reaction today. So you know what? Let's just dive right into it. And we will start with Brandon. Hi, Brandon. Hey, how are you doing? Good, man. So, how are you? Not too bad. I was just wondering, are we 100% sure on this? On what? About Trev. Are we 100% sure? I mean, he hasn't signed anything yet, but... No, that, that, that was kind of the debate that we were having at the start of the show, that, you know, it's, yeah. it's it, um, nothing's official until it, it's official. But what, what do you think the reaction will be from the Nebraska fan base? I mean, he, he was... He just basically over the last couple of years, just got out of the doghouse for getting rid of UNO wrestling. He can be back in the doghouse again and not be able to visit the state. Like if he leaves, if, if it, if it officially happens. Yeah. yeah. I don't think he's booking any family vacations to Nebraska. No, no. I mean, my gosh, cause he, he basically has a blank check here for Nebraska. That's what he's been doing. You know, he could be here as long as Osborne was. It's just I don't I don't understand it. I don't get it. Yeah, uh, Brandon, thanks for the call. I mean, look, I, I I I'm ready to say this first and foremost as we kind of begin things, Jimmy. I do not think like he mentions blank check. This is not, it's not a money thing. It's not about the money. Th think about it this way. Just think about your job, whatever you do in your day to day life. If you are somebody that is a self starter and you have visions of what you want your job to be. And as Trev, Trev does, I know I remember when it came out about the stadium project. I remember Gary Sharp saying this will define Trev Albert's stint as the athletic director at Nebraska. That no matter what happens on any quarter field, this will be what defines his tenure in Lincoln. And as of right now, that is at a complete standstill because there's nobody to approve anything. You have all these projects in mind. You want to get all this stuff accomplished. You've probably been working on it four months since you got this job, and now it's all stuck in neutral because you don't have anybody above you that can approve things, get things done, and you don't know when that, that job is being sewn up anytime soon. Yeah, and so that is the, the, the thing that I kind of begin today with is that it is not about the money. There is now a power uh, vacuum yes. uh, inside of the athletic department, and you look at, at what has happened above him. Um, and, and this isn't like anything new. Ted Carter leaving is, is not anything new. That happened a while ago. Um, but, uh, you know, honestly, like, I, I don't want to pick on the call. I don't care if he like wants to return home to Nebraska. Like that's yeah. not, my mind doesn't go to that place. My mind does go to the place of 
what is it about this moment in time that the guy that we did think was going to be content is deciding to move on? But honestly, man, like, that was the thing when we were talking about yesterday, the, 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 the stability and how it doesn't look like there's any change coming anytime soon. A lot of that was because it was like, well, where would Trev Alberts lead for? Yeah. And, and, and the weirdest part about all this to me is the spot. Like, yes, Texas A&M's got a ton of money, but they've been a, uh, the only place that's had a bigger rotation of athletic directors in the last 20 years. It's College Station. Todd writes, if Trev leaves, the heat will fall harder on the university leadership than on him. I, I think, Todd, Ooh. it, it kind of it depends on the, the eye of the beholder there. I think that there will be some people who I would agree with you. I know that I am looking at this more from the leadership component than I am the Trev component. But I thought that Happer said something really good earlier in the crossover today, and that was like, the job at Nebraska with Trev is not finished. Like, he it's has close. the stadium. I mean, you know, what exactly is going to happen with the football stadium? So you could start there. Obviously, we know about some of these other things that are going on at this moment in time. Lawsuit regarding the uh, women's basketball team is, is, is the most latest or the latest thing that has happened right. uh, in that regard. But when you look around this athletic department, I mean, it's only going into year two. It's what year or month 15, month 16 on the job right now for Matt Rule. You know, it seems like football is in place for, for, I mean, it, it did. 24 hours ago, I thought football was in a great place. Right now, today, Jimmy, is the first time that I have entertained at all any of the, well, what about Penn State stuff? Yeah. Now I think that that is a very valid thing to wonder about. What would happen with Matt Rule if James Franklin were to leave or if James Franklin were to get fired after this season? Now is the first time where I'm saying, uh-oh, Every, I would be concerned. Everybody who thanked or said he was coming here to work for is gone. He's gone. Yeah. Everybody. Absolutely. Like you, there, There's that picture. I know Sean Callahan tweeted that earlier of Ronnie Green, Trev Alberts, Ted Carter, and Matt Rule. Yeah. Matt Rule would be the only he's, guy left from that photo. It's only, only been 15 months. He's the only guy left. He's the only guy left, and that is obviously, you know, it puts everybody in a really tough spot. But then I, I go, again, I go back to the to the stadium and, and what is supposed to happen there. Like, that is a huge, huge thing. Nick, do we have that audio? Yeah. Uh, okay, so... Trev was on with Sean Callahan and Steve Sippel uh, <clears throat> very recently. And here's what he had to say on the stadium. And it's interesting. If if you heard it then, I think it lands one way. Uh, now, I think it lands a little bit harder, perhaps with a sledgehammer. Nick, let's yeah, hear this audio. The in his voice. And there's a lot that impacts it. Obviously, you know, we, we don't we don't have a president right now. And, uh, you know, there, there is an impact to the university there. And so... Um, probably would be good for us at some point to get that figured out. Yeah, yeah. As you said, irritation. I think that that is a great way to describe it. And look, I, I do not want to toot the show's horn too much, but I want to go back to November when that Flatwater Free Press story came out and some of the things that John and I were hearing from those that we trust and some of the things that we said on the air that day was essentially like, this is not going to be as easy to raise funds for this multi-million dollar project as everybody thinks it will be and i think now what that was the beginning of november or so we're talking about four months ago you hear that quote and then the news of the day uh as again we are awaiting it to be official if it is going to be official it it i i just that was the first thing that i thought of this morning was oh man i remember when we talked about the stadium i wonder how much that had to do with it oh we talked about kind ted of feels carter like getting, everything though right ted carter getting all this power and leaving right away i wonder if that had anything to do with it all of these things have been going oh hey we learned about this lawsuit this lawsuit comes back into news recently i wonder if that had anything to do with it i know that that's a that's a lot of things that i'm throwing out there's a lot of things that they all have to recently. play a factor though absolutely they do every single one of them and, and, and i think it's important to to go through the timeline a little bit you talked about the clearwater free press article Article, and then he gets that that raise and that extension two weeks, two weeks after later that, two to weeks the later day. so it was kind of one of those things that nebraska it felt like nebraska was like okay we, we've got our guy and we need to show him that we're all in on him and then ted carter ted carter left before that though right ted carter left you're talking about before the extension before the, happened yeah so yeah that was basically a gift on his way out right. the door to so, so he was getting ready to leave and he was making sure it felt like he was trying to take care of nebraska as as his hey i'm sorry i have to go take this job situation let let me make sure there's some sort of structure as I'm walking out the door. And that's the weirdest thing to me is that he gets this extension. It feels like he was probably promised a lot of things, and now is when he's leaving. That that's that's the only reason that I think maybe there might be something to the Amy Williams lawsuit that's going on too. And, and because it kind of feels like everything else was kind of taken care of before that, and that's the only reason I'm really entertaining that as an option. Doc texts into the show, 402-951-1620, 42 Degrees of Source Hotline. People need to realize the Nebraska Athletic Department isn't as stable as they portray it as, and it hasn't been for the last decade at least. Does stable places. That? See, and that's, that's what I was going to say. Stable places don't have as many changes in leadership as you've been seeing at Nebraska lately. I, I mean, 
Doc, I, I think I'll speak for myself here. You know, anytime that anytime that Nebraska's made a move in recent years, you know, whether it's going back to Bill Moose and then bringing in Frost, then bringing in Trev and bringing in Rule, uh, the way he talked about the leadership above him and Ted Carter and Ronnie Green, like I kept thinking, like maybe this is going to be the time. When everything could be secure, but then when everybody leaves above them, I, I I don't know how you could view this place anymore, or 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 for months now view this as like yeah everybody is rowing the boat together. It's been a while I think since I've been able to say that with a straight face and then believed it for more than like three weeks at a time. But, Every time I want to believe it, something happens and we have to change yeah. our tune. And we were talking about yesterday. It was like it, it felt like at this point in time was the first time. In in maybe twenty years, it felt like there was stability at Nebraska. We we're literally just talking and about how long this did yesterday. that? How long did and that it lasted? Last all of ten minutes. Yeah. How long did that? Uh, last what time for? is Bishop on? By the way, hmm? what time is Bishop on today? Uh, he's on at three fifty. Okay. He's 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 already on right, on, right on, there on Twitter. Right on, on the board. What? Uh, he he just tweeted out. I have not heard anything from directly from Dougie Wald as of three forty Eastern time. Hmm. <laughs> John's, oh, yeah, John's on fire. Hmm. Yeah. Jimmy was asking what time John Bishop was, but the board. Yeah, oh, I was just confused. All right, I just missed it. I feel like it went over my head. All right, uh, when we return, we'll continue to take some of your reaction. John will join us in about an hour. Brian Christofferson will join us in the 4 o'clock hour as well. Uh, let's see, real quick. We might have something. This uh -oh. is from Philip. just want to make sure that this is... Okay, so a reporter from Channel 8, Philip M. Cadalfamo. Uh, Channel 8 in Lincoln. Statement from AM Associate AD about Trev Alberts. Uh, President Mark Welsh appointed a seven person committee to search for our new director of athletics. I've not received any notification from the president or anyone on the committee at this time. So AM is saying that nothing is official. So obviously we will continue to watch out for that one. Jimmy Allen in today for John Bishop. I'm Josh Peterson. Nick Grimm producing it is on Sportsmanlike Conduct on this Wednesday, 1620 the zone. Nick Grimm for Circus Sports Iowa. In about two weeks, not only will we know if Nebraska still has an AD, but we'll also know that you could be in Las Vegas with Josh Happer and myself at the Circus Sports Resort watching the Tournament of Great Significance. And if you don't make it with us there, don't worry. The next best thing is the Circus Sports Iowa app right on your phone in the palm of your hand. Place bets anywhere in the state of Iowa and play along with every team in the dance. Now is also the perfect time to get the app. Because obviously, there's a lot of games that are going to be happening, so a lot of chances and opportunities for you to win. And when you do win and you are on a roll, the cool thing about Circa is they won't limit you for constant winning. So if you're on a streak, keep it up. They want you to make money. That's also why they offer tight money line splits, and they don't keep as much money on large market bets as other places tend to like to do. And if you're worried about their customer support, it's like, oh, I don't want to talk to AI or bad chat bots. Don't worry about that either. These are real people. You can just reach out to them, send an email, or even on Twitter, be like, hey, I'm having this issue, if you do have that issue, and a real person will resolve it as fast as they can. It's completely undefeated. Check out Circus Sports Iowa today, anywhere in the state of Iowa, and level up your sportsbook game. If you or someone you know may have a problem with gambling, call 1-800-238-7633.
Tickets for less. Best seats, best prices, no service fees. Shop ticketsforless.com. KOZN Bellevue, Omaha, Council Bluffs. This is 1620 The Zone. Josh Peterson, Jimmy Allen, Nick Grimm with you on this Wednesday. Jimmy will be in again tomorrow. John will join us live from NYC in about an hour. Certainly, we'll talk about the news of the day with him. Uh, perhaps some official announcement at some point by that moment as well. Brian Christofferson will also join us in the 4 o'clock hour. Um, so I wanted to talk about the potential Trev Alberts news, Jimmy, from, uh, I mean, a, honestly, a variety of ways. But I wanted yeah. to talk about it in this segment from the Matt Rule perspective because we hit on it a little bit in that first segment there. So, you know, like in a vacuum, Trev Alberts is an athletic director. I think that he has done a a pretty good job. Um, you know, he made the decision to fire Scott Frost certainly after I thought he should have. Uh, you know, bringing him back for 2022 and in the moment I thought, wow, this seems like kind of a waste. They're going to throw away a season firing the guy 3 games in. This is kind of a tough look for everybody involved, but you know, if you take a step back, if you fire Scott Frost after 2021, he's probably not getting Matt Rule. If you believe that Matt Rule is going to be the guy to turn Nebraska around, then, you know, that wouldn't have been a possibility to to join the program following the 2021 season. So from that perspective, I think that you can give him certainly a very, very good passing grade, you know, A or B, whatever you want to do there. Um, I think that the changing of, uh, I mean, the relationship that the university and sporting has had with alcohol i think is certainly a plus i think that all of those have gone out kind of with without a hiccup you know sure. it, there's booze in, in nebraska men's basketball women's games we don't ever talk about it it's just there you know we're waiting to see what happens with baseball i'm guessing we're gonna have same conversations it's just gonna be there football be different because the stadium is different um and football and and alcohol have a much different connotation i think than going to a ball game and having a beer does but again thumbs up from that perspective the stadium changes We'll see. You know, the the fundraising for that has, you know, been, I guess, rocky is is maybe the way that I would describe it. So you have that going on. Yeah, it definitely hasn't been smooth. Okay. So all of that to say, he has done a good job. I don't think he's been like the best athletic director in the history of man, but he's done a pretty good job. Feels but, like he's been better than the last five. <laughs> 100%. And so that is why. So now looking at it from the perspective of Matt Rule, I, I like that's a long wind up to say him leaving like in a vacuum. I don't know if it has to be like the end all be all, but what it means for a Matt Rule and the relationship that he has. I think that that is where, not to get too existential on everybody, but I do start wondering, uh, the thing I wrote down earlier was this is one of those moments where you think and where I think about Nebraska's place in the future of college sports because on the surface, and you hit it earlier, and a lot of people have said it today, Texas A&M is also its own weird beast. They have also had... Many athletic directors, they have had many coaches, and their beast is also football. In their sport, they have had a lot of things. They have they have also changed and updated their stadium going back a little over a decade. So they have they have done lots of things as well. That place isn't perfect. Um, I don't think it, it can be. It's too I think it's too big of an institution to be perfect. Um, but to lose the person that you trust, and again, going back to that picture that you referenced, to lose the people that you trust. If you are Matt Rule, that is where this that's why I think it's okay if you want to be concerned about what this says about Nebraska's place in current college athletics or in football moving forward. I think today's news, sadly, is permission to say, I'm concerned, Josh. Yeah. I'm concerned, Jimmy, about the future of Nebraska sports and specifically Nebraska football. I feel like you should be, right? I mean, it's one of those things that how how can you have somebody come pitch you a vision? And it, whether it be Trev Alberts or whoever's next or whoever came before him and not have any certainty of how long they're going to be here because it's become it, the constant in Nebraska has been uncons- uh, inconsistency, right? Like there's just has never been any sort of here's a five year plan and we actually see it come to fruition. Uh, may, maybe Bo Pelini is that guy. I mean, th- th- the last time that we've actually had somebody and, and obviously John Cook could, could, could fall in that to that description. I think his place in this matter becomes very interesting as well because i mean yeah john cook yeah how long how long does he really want to keep going through this as well and i think that's something that needs to be discussed but when it comes to matt rule i think you have to think back to when he took this job and the reasons in which he said he took it you know his wife told him to trust the admiral 
Well, the Admiral was gone in a couple gone. of months. Yeah, he's at Ohio State now. And then you think about when I think back to when 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 Matt Rule was talking to the guys on his team about trusting the process, and he specifically mentioned the red shirt process, and then brought Trev brought Alberts Trev out, out yeah. to talk about red shirting. Yeah, he did. Well, when if you're and, and you think and think about why we thought Nebraska was such a, a structured place now, because it felt like the head coach was an extension of the athletic director, and it felt like the assistant coaches were an extension of the head coach. We you take that first domino out, how much different does that look? And do, we talk about Tony White and the situation that he decided to stick around in Nebraska and not take a head coaching job. Does he feel comfortable making that decision now with his head, with his president and his athletic director gone? Yeah, maybe because Matt Rule's still here. But how much how much does that start to shake the foundation of everything else that's going on inside of it? This is maybe the biggest domino that could have fallen. Yeah, I mean, in the end, the word that I just continue to think of is trust. Yeah. You know, do you trust everything that is going on um, right now, if you are involved, and I mean, I think Amazing Daniel hits on it pretty well. He says even if he doesn't go, doesn't it put him in a bad spot trying yeah. to move projects forward in the future? Yeah, how can yeah. you trust him? That, that, I guess that's kind of the point I was trying to make with Trev. Whether he leaves or whether he stays, how can you trust the athletic department if he's gone? And then how can you trust him if he stays? I guess that that's what I was trying to say. No, yeah. When I was talking, when I was talking earlier about Happer, I was, yeah, I was saying both things. What I was trying to. No, yeah, and so like that, I think that that is very vital with all of this um, that is going on right now, that, that, that is, that, that, that all is hanging over everything. And, you know, even if he were to come back, that it's not like people would be super duper excited about everything, just given, because some people don't like being possibly spurned, let alone actually yeah. spurned, you know, like it bothers some people today that like he is even considering this when there are a variety of reasons that, you know, somebody should consider this job. Like as many problems as I think Texas A&M has, they can say the same thing about Nebraska and they can also say, and we also have a lot of money and we don't have to worry about these things. And, and like money doesn't fix everything. I know that there have been a lot of comments and we haven't hit on it yet today in the hour that we have been on the air. There have been a lot of comments about, you know, Jim Pillen being the governor and the board of regents and just the political machinations of a lot of people in power in this, in this state right now and why people have moved on. And, you know, you talk to some and you, and you say like, Hey, why did, uh, Ted Carter leave. And and a lot of people will point out the politics of what is happening inside of the state of Nebraska. And, you know, I, I am certainly not wanting to talk about culture war issues today, but yeah. I think that that no, stuff, nor do I. <laughs> I think that that stuff plays a big part in what is happening. Uh, I mean, we haven't even talked about it, Jimmy, but what's happening right now at, at, in Florida at the University of Florida, where Emmett Smith is saying, like, don't go there. If you are a Player of color, do not go and play for the Florida Gators. Like Which is his so alma mater. This is there's all sorts of stuff that is happening around the country in a variety of states right now, and and so for for these people to continue to leave at the top of Nebraska, you know, and enough people either hinting or grabbing the blowtorch and saying this is why it's happening. I'm I'm going to listen to those people when they're when they're bringing this up, and I think that that is you know. Playing a part right now, and if Trev doesn't like the leadership at the top, if Trev still doesn't feel like he has a boss, I mean, he doesn't have a boss right now. Um, if he doesn't like where the wind is blowing in that regard, it makes sense. Even if we, I can look and say, hey, Texas A&M is a really crappy job. It makes sense otherwise, though. I you, understand why you would consider it. You can love your alma mater and not be happy working there. And I, 100%. I, I think that's what he kind of get, keeps getting flamed about is, well, he said he loved it here. Well, he might. He may love the University of Nebraska, but he may not love working there. And, and just because... You love the place that you went to college at, and it's changed over the thirty years since you've left. That's a reason not to want to work there. And and I, I when you, when you hear when Trev took this job and when he thanked Ronnie Green and giving him the the leeway to to kind of accomplish his goals. Well, if if that's the reason he decided to take this job is because he had some goals he wanted to accomplish, and now he doesn't have the ability to accomplish them, it would only make sense that he would want to leave. James writes on YouTube, if Trev leaves, we have no one in place to hire a new athletic director. The AD reports to the president. Ted Carter notified the Board of Regents seven months ago. They have been dragging their feet since. Yeah, you know, it's it's always like awkward and uncomfortable when a athletic director gets fired and then they have to then hire that athletic director and then they have to then have that new athletic director bring in the head coach. Like you don't want that. You want the process where it really does feel kind of, I mean, the timeline of it's pretty unique for Trev, right? Where he gets the job in the summer, 
Uh, he decides to move on from Scott Frost a little over a year after that. So he is able to really get a nice lay of the land. Then he is able to go through a two months long coaching search, essentially, and then hire his coach. Like, that is awesome. This situation, given that there is no president at the University of Nebraska yeah. right now, uh, is, a, is a lot tougher. Well, and, and and we keep talking about things that have been said, but think about why Matt Rule or why 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 Trev Alberts was able to hire Matt Rule. It's because Ted Carter gave him the budget to do it. You know, it was like he he, he offered Matt Rule the job. It wasn't going to work financially because of what the Panthers wanted. He came back and Ted Carter's like, "Well, who do you want?" And Trev said, "Well, I want Matt Rule." He said, "Well, then go get Matt Rule." And if you had if you have a boss that trusts your ability to do your job that well and is like, "Let's use the resources available to us," and that gets taken away. It probably feels like a completely different place, and now you don't have the ability to do anything because not only do you have a do you not have the same boss, you don't have a boss at all. That's got to be a very creative, creatively stifling environment that can't be changed until somebody gets hired. And maybe Trev feels like he should be involved in that process, and he's not. I'm just speculating, but it's just one of those things that when, when you are as as of a creative of a mind as Trev Alberts is, and you get your creativity taken away from you, which just by de facto is happening because there's nobody to approve anything. Probably kind of feel probably feels claustrophobic. Chad writes, if Trev leaves, I believe John Cook will be the next AD at Nebraska. I mean, obviously, a lot of people have been uh, pining for him for years to be the next athletic director at Nebraska. I mean, I mean, maybe just because of how much longer is he going to want to coach? But John Cook doesn't come to me as a guy that's going to walk away from coaching and still like want to be around sports. Yeah, he gives me the vibe like I'd much rather be like on the beach fishing. <laughs> I always wonder, about, like everyone. You know, how much of that is wish casting with him, yeah. you know, where it's like, it sounds awesome. It sounds really good because John Cook has been a hell of a coach, right? Yeah. So like, I think I look, I understand why people want him to be the athletic director. Just like how well, I understand why people wanted Tom Osborne to be athletic director. Well, he did it there, you know, and back in the old days, that's what you would do. Uh, you would hire the head coach of football sure. to then be your athletic director. Or if it was a basketball school, you would hire the athletic or the uh, head coach from the basketball school. Uh, to be the, the new athletic director. So I understand why people want John Cook because, again, going back to what you said a few minutes ago, if you look at the last, let's see, Osborne retired 27 years ago. You look at the last 27 years, there has been one consistent inside of the door. Well, no, I was going to say there's been one consistent in the athletic department that's oh, been good, and yeah. that's John Cook. Sure. John Cook has been, everything has happened around him. Many athletic directors, many football coaches, numerous basketball coaches. A handful of baseball coaches, all sorts of stories. Everyone has had problems except volleyball. And so I understand if somebody says, I want John Cook, it makes sense to me. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna make fun of you for having that opinion. I would wonder what you just said. Does he even want that job? Right. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want that job right now. Yeah, especially if you have been the one constant and you see the constant change at that position. Like, why would you want to give up the stability? You know what I mean? Like there's clearly clearly a problem with what's happening in that office like it's you've had somebody come in here that loves this program wanted to be a part of it and now by all all accounts is considering leaving and i, I just i i when you head coaches if if they're anything they're creatures of habit and i don't think john cook would want to do both and i would be highly surprised if he would even want the athletic drop t1d travels right john cook interviewed when trey was hired so he must want the job i mean look that, that does not mean anything. Well, and I would also say that that's three years ago, you know, and so perhaps they, they may have asked him to come in for an interview and he just obligated, felt obligated to do so, too. It's not he may not have actually wanted to go through. Well, that the other thing that I would say, too, on top of all of this with uh, Trev in particular, is that this is a guy and I, you know, sometimes I don't know what is like known and what has been reported and what is not. So, you know, I guess maybe here's some stuff he has interviewed and he has kicked the tires on jobs like he this is not. This is not the first job that has approached him that he has been interested in. Um, I've been told that he was he was or is interested in the president at the University of Nebraska. So like yeah. th this is this is while this is a surprise to us today was a surprise or this is a surprise to me. Is this what, your version of Michael's video? No, yes, exactly. I'm not trying to Michael's video this. Today's news is a surprise. When I when I opened up my phone and had 60 text messages, I was surprised that 24 like, hours we're talking about the stability at the university. I was surprised that wow, A and M, Trev Alberts, like that's done me. Yeah. But I mean, he he has kicked the tires on other things, so I, that part of it doesn't and surprise. I, me. And I heard had heard that as well. But I, I the most surprising part about all of this is where he would be going. Like that that is the most surprising part to me because it just does not feel like a very good match between Texas A&M and Trev Alberts. Like, if it was, hey, he's taking the job at Auburn, 
okay, I could understand that. If he was taking the job at Florida, I could understand that. But the fact that you're going somewhere, which is arguably the Did only you say Auburn. What, I mean, I, just, I, just, right. I wouldn't bring. I mean, Auburn's crazy too. Yeah, yeah but but it's not Texas A&M. And, mm, I don't know, man. Auburn's pretty nuts. They've won a national championship, but Auburn is crazy. Yeah, at least they've had success to base off of. And, yeah, but I, I I just think that it feels like this is and maybe the only other two other job would be UCLA. Like those two jobs, I'd be like, yeah, you gotta leave this situation for that one. I don't know if I would do that, but but I mean, if again, if if it doesn't just have to be about is the other job great, it could be is the current job crappy, you know? And it feels like that's what this is, right? It, it's it's hey, I was promised this bill of goods all the goods are gone now it's just me i'm here left holding the bag i was promised x y and z and now i'm gonna have to repitch this to whoever the next guy is and maybe it was a matter of you know i want to be the next president or i'm walking and that that is a possibility travis says josh would need a much weirder shirt to turn this into michael's video yeah, it's true that is true what i'll say two colors. uh amazing daniel says uh auburn's booster makes ours look casual yeah their boosters are are uh, absolutely bonkers absolutely bonkers. Remember when they killed those trees uh doc says there's obviously a problem within the university system the real question should obviously. be what is the root of the problem a place like nebraska shouldn't have this many problems with upper leadership yet the turnover is higher than that at a walmart the turnover does continue to be uh very very high around here very very high around here yeah it's not great yeah and and it, i i think that is the only reason not the only reason the major reason people are like it's gotta be john cook because to your point, it's just the one spot that hasn't had any. Yeah. And you've had people even come back to some degree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I understand that. Uh, Troy, uh, he wants the job. He's commented a few times and says, give me the job. Retired Army colonel, combat veteran, give me the job. I'll fix this. Matt Rule would love him, apparently. In 60 days. Oh, 60 days. 60 days. Uh, Chance writes, at the time, I thought Carter was going to go on to bigger and better things. But now with Trev leaving, it makes me think the former admirable or admiral and Top Gun pilot got fed up with the goings on at the university. Hmm. I'm sure it's got a little bit to do with both of that, though, right? I mean, it it's not like when he left, it felt like everything was completely smooth sailing. And I mean, yes, Ohio State is obviously a much bigger and better Hunter. job for a t for a ton of reasons. But I I just I I don't know. I mean, I, I think there's got to be a little bit that uh, you you. You never, somebody once told me this, and I believe this. You never leave a bad job, you leave a bad boss. And it kind of feels like that might be the situation. Got an email a few minutes ago from John. He says, I've had a job in the past that I love, but then some things change, and I am no longer even liked the job. So I moved on. It happens. I mean, certainly when I hear that, it makes me think, ah, yeah, how do you feel about the leadership structure at your company? You know, you can like everything about the job that you have, but if you don't, you know, trust the people that are above you, it does make sense. You know, even if we, again, Glass houses and all, right? Even if we are viewing Texas A&M and, and saying, that place is nuts. That place is crazy. On the other hand, you know, and, and this when place I say, is nuts. When, this yes. Place is and when I say they have money, don't view that as he's getting paid more. No, no, no. It's more if he needs money to do things, they have the money to do things. You know, it, it, they, they want, they suddenly had a great quarterback for a year who won the Heisman and then they rebuilt their entire stadium in the offseason. They moved things around. They literally had to move the earth to change the structure of the stadium. And that's what they did at Texas A&M. Meanwhile, Nebraska, he throws out an idea for changes to be made with Memorial Stadium. And we're months later, and we're playing that audio clip, and we're still kind of wondering what's going to happen with it. So, uh, Alex makes a good point. He said, if politics is the problem, I don't know if Texas is the tree you want to be barking at. Right hey, now. I, I, I know I wrote, <laughs> yeah, because I've gotten a few of those responses, too. I paraphrase, too, but that's A few basically. of those responses, too, that you yeah. know people are not liking that. Um, I don't care. Uh, but if you don't think that that's playing a part in this with some of the people that are leaving, I'm, there's no I'm way sorry. There's no way. I'm sorry. Not. I apologize, but that's what's going on. Mm -hmm. All right. 402-951-1620. John Bishop will join us in a little bit. Uh, Charles wants to know, am I going to throw out a grum ball? Either way, I'm not going to throw out a grum ball. You coward. No who, grum balls. Who does Trev report to right now? That's Nick. That is the million dollar board question. of regents, I guess. That's yeah. kind of you what know? I was thinking, but. Yeah. Probably, I'd say the Board of Regents. Yeah, so. and that's there's literally nobody else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and one more, uh, one more tweet. Mustache Adam says, "I know the college landscape is so completely different now, but the lack of consistency in the upper echelon of the university since the late '90s and early 2000s has really reared its ugly head in Lincoln since then." You want to talk about an all-time stretch, an all-time period of time to really struggle. This has just been the worst as money has ballooned, as television rights has exploded, as Nebraska has changed conferences like of all of the eras in the history of this athletic department. 
where they need to really get their house in order. This has been the one where they have struggled to the most. And I know that for so many of you, it is so frustrating. And it's certainly frustrating as hell for me too, because they seem to have a lot of the things that you would want. Maybe they don't have every advantage, you know, especially sports to sport. They certainly don't, but they have a lot of advantages and they have just been unable to take advantage of the advantages and their weak spots have really showed themselves over and over and over again. And that's why we're potentially talking about another athletic director just a few years later, moving on, let alone an athletic director who is an alum of the program. You know, and a lot of people point at the Osborne retirement and say like, that's, you know, that's, that's when everything kind of changed. Nothing has ever really Before felt that. stable. No, I don't even know that. I, I think maybe it might even be more Greg Byrne. Like it feels like when he Maybe was Bill. Or, yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Not not the. That's what I was gonna Alabama, say. It's yeah. before Osborne. Yeah, yeah. It, it feels like when Bill Byrne left. That that's really when it feels like it became unstable and things really started to shake and fall apart. Yeah, and he left uh, in two thousand and two hundred two. Yeah, and after that, that immediately kind of led into Solich uh, getting fired. It did. Yeah. He, you know, he left and he didn't. He got out of Dodge. He didn't have to. Uh, he didn't have to be the one to to fire Frank. You yeah, know? he put that on the next guy. And look, shout out to him. Didn't have to worry about it. And yeah, a lot of stuff has happened since then. And Where did he go whole, again? Texas, Texas A&M. A&M. Yeah, indeed he did. All right, 402-951-1620. More to come. John will join us in a little bit. Brian Christopherson next hour as well. Jimmy Allen in today. It's on Sportsmanlike Conduct here on 1620 The Zone. And tomorrow is a Thursday. And you can bet the NBA with a no-sweat same-game parlay from FanDuel every Thursday with TNT Thursdays. That means you get bonus bets back if your same-game parlay does not win and it does not matter if you are new to FanDuel or if you already have an account if you're new go to FanDuel.com slash 1620 today and bet the NBA with that no sweat same game parlay on TNT Thursdays and if you head over to FanDuel you check out the matchups that are going on in the association whether it's tonight certainly whether it's tomorrow to take advantage of this they have the lines they have the money line they have the totals they have player props Obviously, if you're looking ahead, like I did last year with the Nuggies, maybe you want to take a bit of a long shot. Maybe you're like, look, I like Denver to win it all. What are their latest odds? Plus 390? I think that's a pretty safe bet right now with the Celtics higher than them at plus 230. Just go to FanDuel.com slash 1620 and bet the NBA with a no-sweat same-game parlay with TNT Thursdays. 21 plus and present in Iowa. Minimum three-leg parlay required. Refund issued is non-withdrawable bonus bets, which expire seven days after receipt. Max refund, $5 unless otherwise specified. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-BETS-OFF. Your Omaha area forecast from the Godfather's Pizza Weather Center and KETV News Watch 7 on 1620 The Zone. If you're unhappy with your job or employer and you've hit a dead end, it's time to start your new career as a delivery driver with Host Coffee. Our local family-owned business is growing, and we now have openings for delivery drivers and other positions starting at $22 an hour with full benefits. If you're interested, visit hostcoffee.net slash careers to connect with us. Host Coffee is always roasting something good for you.
eBay Motors is here for the ride. 120,000 miles of night drives, daily commutes, and who knows how many. Are we there yet? Through countless fixes, elbow grease, and a new radiator, you kept your ride alive. With eBay Motors, you have over 122 million parts to keep it running. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, they'll be the perfect fit every time. Plus, at these prices, well, we're burning rubber, not cash. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. It's unsportsmanlike conduct. We did talk about the clap. Mm-hmm. The 1620. The Zone. Friends, a reminder that you can head over to 1620thezone.com and you can shoot and score nice. your way to Las Vegas for the college basketball playoff. How about this, Nick? One yes. lucky. 1620 yes. The Zone listener will snag a VIP flyaway trip to Circa Resort and Casino Whoa. to watch the action on a 40-foot screen from Six Pools. Plus, you don't have to share a bed with Nick. Or Josh. Or Happer. Chances don't end there, though. You could also win a watch party at Backlot Tap House in Exarbon for you and your friends. We'll be doing that for two people. You can enter now at 1620thezone.com. Do you know, Nick? Yes. Two weeks from today? Well, I'll be on the radio actually I, in las vegas you will i will be on the radio i'll be tickling happer, chains. you'll be tickling i'll be you'll i'll be, be talking tickling. and happer will probably be playing blackjack showing uh, his nipples meanwhile i'll be talking about the new athletic director at nebraska do you think this bill uh, bird happer did say he would maybe tickle some chains with me do you think uh, this uh this deal may be more enticing for people if they could share a bed with, with young Nick. with Nick, no. great question. <laughs> yeah, I would say hell no. You can tickle chains with me if you win. How mm. about that? Uh, John writes, "Why is no one willing to say the quiet part out loud?" Oh, that caller earlier is going to be pissed about this. You ready, <laughs> caller? Connor canceled football. Said no one should care about it anymore. And days later, Nebraska's AD is looking for a new job. Mm. Did Happer do this? Happer did this. This Happer, does feel like this is a Connor Happer special. Happer put a sticker of Connor Happer pointing on a gas pump. Uh, it is pretty interesting that during the summer I was famously gone and you yes during the college world series no usually not during the college world series Jimmy eating I a was, salad I was gone I was gone and John and Happer spent time talking about how there's been no drama no drama mm. with Oscar football it's been great and then like they came out and said they hated women or something, and they had to apologize for how much they hated <laughs> women. The breakfast you, thing. You remember that story? Yeah. Well, now look. Is what, this the real reason? Is 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 the training table the reason that Trev Alberts is leaving? Well, Nick, now you look at Monday. Was I here on Monday? No. And what did Connor Happer do on Monday? Said that football was stupid. He Bingo. He said football is dumb. He said you're all sheep. Essentially, I'm paraphrasing, perhaps a little bit. I think that's exactly what he said. But he says you he are called- sheep. I like the sport that matters in basketball. And now look, days later, days later, Trev Alberts is maybe leaving. I can't stop thinking about that quote where Nebraska can always get just a little more worse. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You want me to read that again? That's that was a good. It's a fantastic quote. Nebraska athletics is just the gift that keeps on giving. I received this text at 1149 a.m. this morning from somebody. Just remember, it's never so bad at Nebraska that it can't get just a little worse. Put that on a poster. It really, I mean, that's a shirt. I would wear that shirt. Can we, we should print that out and put it on the wall of random. Yeah, you think Just so? a good reminder. Like the text with the bubble and everything? Yeah. I can do that. I'll take a screenshot of it right now, Nick. And, and I could send it to you and you could print it out in a Word document. Awesome. Email it to me. All right, perfect. Do you think the longer this goes, is it more or less like you, likely he stays? Or does that not matter to you? I, I mean, look, I, I, I don't want to say that it does not matter to me. I think that that is a very good question. I think that you are asking a very good question right now because, um, you know, I, I know that, that a lot of people are insinuating that, right? That we got, so the news oh, came you, down. You what, got the a and uh, who was it that put out and said that the, the seven party, uh, yeah, the we read that AD, yeah, yeah, right. But I'm, I'm just going, re, re going through the time. Oh, okay. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here, let's you, go all the way back first. Yeah, sure. 9 a.m. Right. He's That's gone. The, He's out of here. So See the you later. news is at 9 a.m. His family's it's, on a plane. It's first reported by <laughs> Houston Chronicle. And then a lot of other people follow. And the vibe in that moment is essentially, Trev Alberts and AM are really close to doing a handshake meme, and he is going to go to College Station. So that is where we were at. 
throughout much of the morning. Nothing really changed yeah. then until I believe the noon hour. And that is when Doug Ewald first spoke to everybody. Well, he started. Yes, he <laughs> he's not responded to me just yet, uh, but he has spoken to a lot of people now over the last three ish hours. I would say I can't remember when the first Doug Ewald I think it was. Was it Andy Kindy? Kindy somebody yeah. in the noon hour, though, said that Amy just has had a chance to talk to him in the one o'clock hour. Um, and then, as you said, there was the uh, statement that was given to a Channel 8 reporter that said, you know, we're going to be hiring somebody, but they did not say anything sure. about about Trev. Yeah, the direct report was Texas and President Mark Walsh appointed a seven person committee to search for our new director of athletics. I have not received any notification from the president or anyone on uh, on the committee at this time. So the associate AD in College Station does, uh, if you take him at his word, does not know anything about this. So that is that's the latest. So we, you know, all of that to then re ask the question of. Does it make me think one way or the other that he is going to stay at Nebraska, right? Yeah. Or like, does it make it more likely? I don't think that it's a bad question to ask. I really don't because I mean that news now the the official tweet is really first weird. Tweet, it's six and a half hours ago. Now, you know, we have seen. I, I've been watching sports my whole life. I've been covering sports now for quite some time, and this would not be the first time that news was reported and then eventually it like was walked back. And it also wouldn't be the first time that news was reported and it took a little bit longer than we expected, but eventually it was made true. Now, I do understand why a lot of other people are pointing out like, hey, 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 don't forget about what happened with Texas A&M back in November when it seemed like they had a new head coach and then eventually they did not have a right. head coach. And that was Mark Stoops. And I remember that night very famously because uh, that was the night of my reception for my wedding. And Were you ignoring like, your wife? I was not ignoring my <laughs> wife, but I was every time I, you know, at those you've, you've had, you've gotten married, you, you know, you bounce around, you start talking to people. And every time that I would go talk to Michael Severe, Mike Schaefer, whomever it was, hey, is there any news on the Texas A&M thing? Um, you know, and eventually... Obviously, it didn't turn into Mark Stoops, and here they are, uh, though I think that they ended up getting a uh, very good coach moving forward with football. So I know that th something like this has happened with A&M before, and that ultimately has not resulted maybe in the exact thing that they thought it would. I'm I'm stalling right now like hell because I don't know. I don't know. I could see – I could really see either side that, you know, this is – because the, uh, the opinion that I have seen is that he is – like really trying to put pressure on Nebraska, right? That's yeah. what that's what a lot of people are theorizing right now. Of he's putting pressure on Nebraska to make he, him the president. You think? What? No, I just think to maybe give him a little bit of I don't know what is, assurance. You know, like that is that is the a, a really good question, Jimmy. Like yeah. what? What, is what does he want, want from Nebraska? Trev four zero two nine five one sixty twenty. What is, Tell us what you want. What does Trev want from Nebraska? What does he want? I think that that is a I think that that is a great question. Um. I don't know. I don't know what the answer is to that question. So that is one theory. And then the other is it could just be because they're just waiting to get it done. You know, like I know that we we are in a society now where we really do like having the answers as fast as possible. But thanks, Twitter. Can it, can it, can it? Is it a possible that it's just like they are just figuring everything out and they're dotting all those I's and they're crossing all those T's? Or is that too is that too simplistic of me to to one of you it that way? Uh, and I don't know. The other like one outlier that I highly doubt it is, but it could be, is they may want to let him announce it, get him to College Station, allow him to get to the podium and say it, take it the Dylan Raiola approach. Listen, we need the recruiting video, okay? We, Hayes Fawcett needs to tw tweet out the, uh, the the graphic of, of Trev Albertson. That would be funny. That would be really that would funny. Be funny. Uh, I don't think that's actually the case. But Patrick uh, says leverage, but. But again, for what though? I mean, for uh, what? If he is waiting and he's going to stay at Nebraska, that is the obvious answer. But yeah. leverage of what? Yeah. Amazing Daniel says, or just to make somebody president? Yeah. yeah anybody. I mean, anybody. Yeah. Hire some. And okay, let's throw this out there. Is it about who the president could be? That I mean, if you want to talk about leverage, could it be he knows who the hire is going to be, or he has a very good idea, Jimmy, on who the hire is going to be? And he and may not like it. Yeah. That would be leverage that one person could ask for. I think that that could absolutely be leverage that somebody could ask for. Johnny Pig writes, even if Trev comes back, has the damage already been done? How does a retention conversation go with rule or anyone for that matter? That's, I know that that's the other question that's kind of hanging over everything. And, and we've hit on, on, on that question or maybe something like it at various points today. And that is, you know, would people still be okay with him returning? I would say, yes, you should be. But I also understand why you'd say no to go back. Was it you who brought up Dana Allman earlier? Yeah. Dan Altman returned to Creighton 
and a lot of people inside and outside of the program say that things were never the same. Yeah, they lost and trust that, immediately. And it was always uncomfortable and it was always awkward. And that also coincided with, you know, a down moment for the program where they weren't as good. They weren't as consistent anymore. And a lot of people circled that as the reason, which I don't think was the case. Yeah, but. before he uh, ended up moving on to uh, to Oregon. So 2007, right? Sounds right. Was it? Man, it's been that long. Yeah, now. it's been a long time. But it, this does definitely have those vibes. And and I highly doubt he cares in the moment. But I mean, I I would be surprised if the well, can I come back to Nebraska thought hasn't crossed his mind. You know what I mean? I mean, mm-hmm. he, he heard the rumblings and the the naysayers after, after the UNO stuff. I mean, it's got to be like it, you, you don't say you love a place and then take the thought of what how you'll be treated and can you come back any differently? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Dave says until Trev goes to College Station and says gig them. They're apples and oranges. Yeah, if he has to go down there and, you know, call the hogs, but in Texas A&M parlance, <laughs> which would be uh, doing the old gig them. What if he accidentally does a woo pig suey? What if he, now that would that'd, be, that'd be good TV that folks would be quite interesting. All right. We'll uh, take another break. More of your uh, responses, more of your reactions. When we return 402-951-1620, we do have room for you right now. John Bishop will also join us in a few minutes. We'll talk about uh, the Jays. We will start talking about some other topics today uh, as well. Uh, the local hoops teams as they are about to get going. Creighton will play tomorrow at six. Nebraska will play on Friday night. Uh, by the way, right now at MSG, Xavier, the nine, is up 16-15 to 15 on the eight-seeded Butler Bulldogs. There is 10-50 to go in the first half in that one. He's Jimmy. I'm Josh. More to come. It's on Sportsmanlike Conduct here on 1620 The Zone.
Jimmy Allen, to my left, I am Josh Peterson. John Bishop will be joining us in some way, shape, or form <laughs> in the next segment. We don't know how. We don't know. Well, we do know why. I mean, we know the original why. We don't know why now. How much will it be Creighton? Mm. How much will it be Trev? We'll find out. Chris, we'll get to your call in just a moment. Doc uh, t- texts in as well as a few others. We'll read some text real fast. <laughs> Doc says the most alarming thing about this whole situation is the fact that money isn't the problem. So a- if money, as that should be the most alarming situation. So if money isn't the problem, that opens up a- another can of worms. Uh, a text from the 402 writes, The reason I've been holding out hope for Trev staying is because of something Gary said this morning which was he confirmed with somebody that NU was informed he was offered the job. When I heard that, it felt like Trev just using this to get something. Why else inform them he was offered the job if he were leaving? He would inform them that he took the job. And and that's why when I said when we were doing the crossover that I, I'm more leaning towards him staying. Interesting. Just because I, if if it was a done deal and it was, hey, this is the situation, I'm out, I, it feels like something would have come out by now. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of what we're all wondering about right now, right? Uh, let's see. Uh, Pedro says, hi, guys. Hello. Do you think that at the press conference, Trev has both hats on the podium and puts on the hat <laughs> of the place he is going to? Oh, Thanks, Pedro. That could be a fun way to do it. That would be very, very nice. It's like recruiting where you decide where you're going. He could put on an A&M hat. There could be some drama where hey, he picks takes up off and throws it. That he, would be classic. He picks up the Husker hat and he's like, uh, uh, nope. Yep, the old okie doke. The old okie doke. That wouldn't offend a lot of people whatsoever. No, it'll be people would be normal about it. They definitely would be. Let's go to the As phones. they have been all day. Yeah, 402-951-1620. Chris is up on the 42 Degrees of Source hotline. Chris, what's going on? Hi, Chris. Hey, guys. Um, so I get the uh, Dan Ullman comparison, the thoughts of would fans allow Trev, you know, you know, back into the ring, I guess, if he turns this thing down and, and um, if he ends up staying in Nebraska, is there thoughts that could ruin his relationship? The way I'm seeing it is he can take his time uh, with this because I think for the, the fans that follow this program and university religiously, as I do, that they understand that I think Trev is giving them what they deserve as far as hearing him out on what needs to be done. Um, and that Trev is, is, a, is a Nebraskan at heart. I understand that Dana was as well, but they didn't play at Creighton, I believe. Um, Trev, obviously, we know who he is here. And the, the Board of Regents has made terrible decision a terrible decision for many years now, including botched hires with Bill Moose and with Eichhorst and everything. And so the way they're, they're going about this now, I feel like it's a situation where Trev said, I'm not getting what I need to be done. I need the stay and move forward. I've already put it out there publicly. And if it's not going to be done, now you're making me out to be a liar. And I'm already going to piss off 20,000 people. Uh, here in the future that I'm willing to do that for you guys, but you're not letting me hire a president and get this stuff done. Here's what I need done. Get it done or I'm gone. And I feel like that's what I'm picturing in these meetings that they are having meetings right now about Trev ringing their ear and giving them what I believe they deserve, essentially, as far as a talking to, I guess you could say. But I would welcome back open arms and because I trust the man and I think he legit has his heart in the university's best interest um, that he knows what he wants to do here, how it's going to affect him. He's not an outsider that just is here for a paycheck um, and to, you know, bring in a, you know, a new athletic budget and all that. He's here because he truly believes he wants to be here and has the best interest at heart. And so take your time with the Regents and uh, he will be back. He is not leaving for AM. I'll call that now. All right. Thank you for the call, Chris. 402-951-1620. Yeah, and I think that's the point to take about all this, right, is like, if you don't understand why he would consider leaving, then you're just, you, you, your rose-colored glasses are on a little bit too tight. Like, he's in a no-win situation right now. He's already made several thousands of people mad by saying, hey, we're going to take away your season tickets for a little while, but we're going to make your overall experience better. Nobody's happy about that, but it's an understanding of we. this is going to be a better situation for everybody. And he's already made several people mad. And now he's got to kind of wear it and not be able to move forward with his vision because he doesn't have anybody to improve it. Uh, Jacob texts into the show. Folks going to want to meet up at 72nd and Dodge once it breaks that Trev isn't leaving. Would we have a uh, little party down at 72nd and Dodge like the old days? Would Trev returning warrant a party at 72nd and Dodge? We can make tacos. Trev tacos. Trev tacos. Oh, why not? That doesn't want, sound very appetizing. people not want tacos? I, I mean, I don't know how I feel about Trev tacos. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Indeed. Uh, back to the phones we go. Andrew is up next. Hello, Andrew. 
Hello, how are you doing? Good, man. How are you? Good. Um, I compare this to almost like a when Dana Altman left and he tried to come back. Yeah. He was never re- really accepted. I mean, he came back and he was never really. People were pissed that he even flirted with Arkansas. Mm-hmm. See, and- so I don't. I don't think he can come back. Andrew, this is a much different situation, though. Dana was in a situation yeah, I, where he had a ton of, of people and support around him. He had his boss directly above him that didn't change. You're in a situation where, Trev, you're kind of the only person sitting in the athletic department right now, and it all kind of falls to you. It it has similar vibes. It's nowhere near the same situation. But isn't it? I mean, it's like, I see, I, I think when you flirt with somebody else, <laughs> And uh, I, I understand his frustration with the university. Nebraska has kind of messed this up pretty good in a lot of over the last 15, 10 years. But I still say it, if, you, if you're dating someone and you've gone on another date, you probably lost that first date. That's right. my take. Thanks, right. Andrew. Andrew, so it's funny. I'm surprised you disagree with him. I, because I agree with him. It, it, like, listen, the, the Dana Altman thing came out of nowhere and wasn't really expected. And I'm sorry, I thought I turned my microphone off and I just coughed into it. I apologize to anybody listening. Uh, but, like, if you don't understand why Trev would consider leaving, you're not paying attention. Like, the Dana Altman thing didn't, like, it was just greener pastures. That's not the case here. I guess I'll disagree. I mean, I I think it could, it can be about Nebraska, but it could also be about greener pastures, right? I think the point is less where he is going and more if he's going to return. Do people feel jaded today? And that's where I think the Dana Altman comparison I think lands very very well. Yeah, I mean, I I, I, get, I get the comparisons. I do. I just think they're completely different situations. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. I, I I mean, look, are they different? Sure. Um, I think the point is is less where were they going versus. Um, you know, one another. Have they actually you know, how it? how good of a job is Arkansas of hoops versus how good of a job is Texas A and M athletic director? I think that you're viewing it too much through that prism versus more how people feel if a guy leaves and then returns. I think that that's the comparison that Andrew was making. And yeah. That's the one that I made in the previous segment. And and I brought it up earlier too. And apparently Andrew just joined the show for the first time because it's like the third time we've talked about this. Uh, but it's one of those things that like, yes, are people going to be upset that Trev even considered this? Yes. Does it make more sense that he's considering this than Dana Altman moving on to Arkansas? In my opinion, yes, it, it makes way more sense. Uh, Happer's meme guy says, are people this emotional and overdramatic if the AD isn't a former player? That phone call a couple of minutes ago talking about where his heart is sounded like a couple of years ago defending Frost. Yeah. At the end of the day, business is business. I think it's okay to be frustrated about him moving on, mainly because it just seemed like this was finally all locked up in a very nice, neat bow uh, and that things were going to be good moving forward. And like again, if you want to be concerned about this from the Matt Rule perspective, I think that that is totally okay. I always will believe that somebody else out there is going to be able to do the job. I always believe that that is going to be possible, but we'll see. Yeah, there there will be another athletic director available to hire. Uh, back to the phones we go. Walt is up next. Hello, Walt. Oh man, these Husker fans need to inhale and exhale here. It's like. Doesn't everybody look for an opportunity or a better opportunity that yes. comes around? Or, 100%. Or somebody's looking to interview you for an opportunity and you go, you know what, this might benefit me. I, I at least deserve the right to go look into it and maybe interview or, or see what the aspects of the process in, in this. Husker fans are so sensitive about, and I'm a Husker fan, we're just overly sensitive about everything right now. And it's just, it's just breathe. I mean, it's, let the man do what he does. And, you know, Trev's always been kind of a trailblazer. You know, he did some things that you know people didn't like, but it worked. You know, now he's at Nebraska, changed some things in the stadium. It's going to work. Let him be who he is and what he does. And uh, and not be an athletic director that has no vision and just sits in their chair and does nothing. Uh, I, I think, man, just breathe. My gosh. You know, and, and thank you, Walt. Well, thanks for the call. The other thing that I think would be an interesting case study is how much different do people feel if this comes down, like, after they talk about retaining Frost. The basketball program's not in a good spot. The football program is obviously on the doorstep of firing the golden boy. Like, I wonder how, what the reaction would be at that point versus 
Fred Hoiberg has things rolling. It feels like Matt Rule has turned it around. The women's basketball program is performing uh, at high levels. It'd be interesting to see what what the thought process would be. Then. Yeah, by the time that, that Moose got pushed out, it was like awesome, great. You know, he sucks. It's yeah. time to move I forward. Guess sucks right now. Everything you know with men's bat. I mean, Jimmy, we spent time talking about it. Men's basketball, they're going to the tournament. Women's basketball, they're going to the tournament. Though obviously, there's some stuff hanging over that program right sure. now. Football, it seems like things are going in the right direction. Obviously, volleyball just had another successful season. Uh, I heard somebody say it this morning. I think it was on the crossover, but maybe it was just Happer or, or Josh later on. But right now, the coaches that have been hired by Trev or the ones that he has kind of put his weight behind and given support, it seems like he has made the right moves in those moments. You know, whether or not he actually wanted to bring back Fred versus doing it because it made sense dollars and cents wise, um, whether or, or not, you know, I don't know, whatever will bolts, I guess he has made the right decisions. And yeah. so what sucks about today, if this ends up being the end is that now seems like the moment where everything was working out well. And so if that stops today, um, that's where people get, you know, really frustrated. And I guess scared I, for for uh, things moving forward. Yeah, because it feels like for the first time in a long time, you have a situation where everything is put in, in place to be successful. And if you take away, like we said earlier, the biggest domino and everything starts to fall, it'll be circled in red and highlighted in yellow that this is exactly where everything went wrong. Uh, Stigori writes on YouTube. He says several media keep alluding to something being behind the scenes being really bad, but won't say what it is. Stigori, I would love to, or Strigori, I would love to know what, what uh, in particular, who you are talking about there, because I haven't maybe seen a whole lot alluded. Except, I don't think we've said that. Except to just, you know, I mean, I've heard uh, that it has been quite the bleep show around the uh, offices today, because this is Why totally, it be? Yeah. yeah, this is totally, <laughs> totally unexpected, and it, it has caught uh, everybody off guard. Uh, by the way, some news coming down from Ross Dellinger, not related. Trev Alberts, our first non-Nebraska news of the day. Uh, ACC Big 12 presidents voted Wednesday to authorize their commissioners to adopt the new CFP framework. So that would be the framework that would give those two conferences two. Is this Sabretooth or Octopus? This is Sabretooth. Nice. Nick, this is Sabretooth. Uh, so this is, as he describes it, a long, dramatic march to the playoffs future beginning in 2026. So uh, they have voted pro Sabretooth. Um, and so we will see what happens there. One more call before we talk to John Bishop. I, I'm guessing Nick will probably be on the phone. Uh, Matt is up. Hello, Matt. What's up, Matt? Hi, guys. Hey, I got a little bit of a different take. Dana Allman went, actually went down to Arkansas and did a press conference Yep. where Texas A&M is just, it got leaked out that they're interested in Trev. And, you know, Trev hasn't made any statement whether he's going or not and i'm guessing if he makes this if he's going he'll make a statement and he's gone but damon altman came back after that press conference and uh to me that's 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 a whole different deal all right i mean uh, understandable again i i just know how people uh how people react uh james tweets in he says decades of incompetence from leadership and fans are supposed to chill trevor has been begging you or uh, begging us to donate money because to flirt with a new job the program is a big bucket of gross and it's i mean that part sucks big time right but there's now. no argument that's that's not and nothing that person just said is incorrect yeah it's i mean that's why if you if you want to say that this is the beginning of not the end the program has been bad for a while but if you want to say that this is another step in a long line of steps of gross incompetence and you know flailing around Utility. This, but it I'm could fine be the with you wanting to say that, and it could be the argument for you saying right now, give Trev whatever he wants because it's it just feels stable for the first time in years. And think about that statement alone. He's done it for a few months without anybody above him, and it hasn't felt like it's wavered until today. Again, I go back to what we said earlier: the leverage that he is hoping for. What would that mean if that is what this is all about right now? What is the leverage that he wants? Yeah, I, the only thing I can think of is is to make him the president. That's the only thing it could feel like he is would to want. make Trev the president. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know what else. I don't President know what a. or 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 <laughs> whoever he he would want to approve. Uh, when we return, John Bishop will join us. We could talk about this with him. Also, get his uh, thoughts on the Big East tournament, which has started in NYC. It's twenty six all with three fifteen to go right now between Xavier and Butler. John joins us when we return from New York City here on sixteen twenty the zone.
Welcome back. It is Unsportsmanlike Conduct here on 1620 The Zone and 1620thezone.com. We'll go to John in just a moment, uh, but some uh, more responses. Uh, first of all, Jeff writes, put pressure on Josh to make a grumball prediction for Trev staying or leaving. I do like that sound effect. Only way to redeem himself after the Riola grumball fell apart. This is garbage. Absolute garbage. No, the Riola grumball was still accurate. Thank you very he much. He did go to Georgia. Also, we were Literally. just... We were just talking about the saber tooth model, Nick. Yes. An email from John writes, yesterday when you were talking about the new 14-team CFP, you brought up the 3-3-2-2-1 plus 3 format, and Jimmy said it sounded like a really bad defense. Once again, bad take by Jimmy. 3 plus 3 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1 gets you to your 11 defenders. Then you would add 3 more. That is playing 14 against 11. That would be a really bad defense. It's illegal. But it'd be a great defense if it wasn't illegal. That's fair. It would be a great defense if it wasn't illegal. All right, let's see if we uh, can talk to our good friend John Bishop right now. Your your friend. Who is somewhere. Wow, tough look for you. (laughs) Somewhere in New York City. Hi, John. What's up? How are you? I'm good. How are you guys? Well, you know. (laughs) We're busy. (laughs) Just stuff going down? Well, yeah. Yeah, stuff was going down. I was getting ready to get on a boat today, and all of a sudden, Twitter exploded with this. I was like, oh, that's interesting. I loved your tweets about, like, you're, you're celebrating America. You're having a great time. I'm celebrating America, man. I was at the Statue of Liberty. I was celebrating the freedom and the liberty of America. And yeah. Meanwhile, you know, Trev's trying to, you know, free himself from Nebraska. It's, uh, it, was a, it was a perfect symmetry. Yeah. What, what is the reaction uh, that you have to the news? And obviously we continue to wait anything official, nothing right now. So it could really go, I guess, either way at this point. But what, before we get to Creighton, what, what's the uh, reaction to the news of the day with Trev? Well, if anything else, it's, you know, I'm not, I guess I shouldn't be surprised because, you know, with this university, it seems like there's, the next drama is always waiting around the corner. Um, I guess we didn't anticipate that the political problems behind the scenes were um, probably a little bit worse than we had thought. Uh, though we had thought for the longest time, hey, everything's kind of settled down now and everything's copacetic. But now you look at, and you know, we don't cover necessarily the presidential stuff as much as other people do. But the fact that, you know, we've been going on, you know, six, seven months without knowing who the next university president is because Ted Carter's been gone for a long time now, and that that process is still going through. You know, um, we talk about the synergy from the top on down, and if that very top guy's not there, you do wonder if uh, if that's going to shake things up elsewhere. You know, I give Trev, you know, Trev was pretty coy about all of this, considering that he hadn't really given off any hints that anything was going on. I mean, he just he had just talked about what three, four, five days ago about the stadium project and other things that were happening, and now all of a sudden this bombshell drops. I'm not convinced that he's necessarily gone. Um, I think kind of similar to how everything kind of played out with Greg McDermott, I think some of this stuff getting out was timed at a specific time to Mm. garner some action. So maybe things are happening behind the scenes to try to keep Trev around or at least to give him an idea, hey, where's where's everything going to line up, you know, from the top on down? Because without that at the top, how do you know – if you're going to be able to keep uh, keep everything in order, so you know I'm 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 kind of in a seat, sit and wait mode, just like the rest of us. But you know, I, I'm honestly I'm not all that surprised because it seems like these types of things happen in Nebraska about every 12 to 18 months. We've uh, talked about today what Trev could want from the university, and obviously the word leverage has been thrown around. If, if, if in your eyes, if Trev was trying to leverage something, what do you think it would be? Well, it's always about power, right? It's always about political power. It's always about, you know, being able to get the things done that he wants to get done. Remember, he's trying to push through a nearly half billion dollar stadium renovation, which is the most expensive project in the university's history, not the athletic department, the entire university's history. And that, that, that's a lot of strings that you have to pull. Not to mention, you know, there's other talk, you know, the interesting timing of the, the baseball news that came out today regarding, you know, upgrades that, Haymarket Park and the interest in wanting to do that. Plus, you know, you're transitioning into a whole new realm of college athletics where the Big Ten and the SEC are only getting stronger and the money's only getting bigger. You know, I I think this is as much a power thing as it is anything else so that Trev knows, hey, you know, when I took this job, I wanted to know that I was going to get support from the top on down. I was going to get the opportunity to do the things I wanted to do. Obviously, there are some kinks in the road that are getting in the way that are making it very, you know, difficult for him to 
pull the right strings. Now, what I find interesting is that it's Texas A&M that could be the school that takes him away. Texas A&M is all about politics, too. So uh, I don't know if, you know, if it's necessarily the grass is greener on the other side, but the fact that this is getting out today, I think certainly there's, 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 there's a political ploy here, and, and I think that ploy is more about power than it is about money. Trev doesn't need the money. Trev has said before that he, was, uh, he would have been satisfied you know, retiring from Omaha, that he didn't necessarily need the Nebraska job, but maybe there was a sense of obligation to come fill it. So I don't think it's the money thing. I think this is more of a power thing. John Bishop joining us. He'll be on the call tomorrow night for Creighton Hoops uh, as they probably will take on Providence. John, uh, as we transition now to Creighton basketball, I was thinking uh, about the regular season this morning. I mean, like probably a half hour before the news broke. And I was wondering how you would grade this year's regular season for Creighton from two perspectives. The first would be on the merits of what they did in the vacuum. But also the second one would be the expectations that they had going in. How would you grade them? And would, would the answer actually be the same either way? It's probably the same. I mean, you know, for the 10th time in 11 years, Creighton has either met or exceeded its preseason expectation. It's only that the team they finished behind this year uh, was different than what was expected. It was supposed to be Marquette. It ended up being UConn. Uh, and, uh, you know, but they were picked second. They ended up finishing second. They ended up finishing the season pretty strong. So I think, you know, overall, you know, you're looking at, I, I, it, it's hard to say it's an A necessarily just because, you know, they wanted to win the league. They didn't win the league, but it's certainly a solid a B plus, which certainly is good enough. And that's the unique thing about college basketball is it's so focused on the end of season run and what you do in the tournament that, you know, the regular season stuff while it does matter, while they say it matters, while they talk about winning championships and hanging batters, at the end of the day, it all comes down to what you do in the tournament. But, you know, from a regular season perspective, I think you have to give it a solid B+, plus, especially considering how they started. They went 0-2. It was the Big East play. Two very disappointing losses. You know, Villanova, they had that game in hand, lost it at home. Marquette had a good start to that game, played well. Second half happens, you know, they can't get a rebound. They commit too many turnovers. They lose to that game. They find themselves in an early hole. But that last, you know, 11, 12, 13 game stretch where they won, you know, 10 out of 13, um, you know, that's the, that's usually good enough to get it done in a lot of conferences. So I, I overall would give it a, a very solid B plus. But as you know, it's all going to come down to what happens in the postseason. And part of that grade starts this week. In your opinion, is there anything they can do to grab a one seed, or is it a matter of they're just playing between the two and the three now? I can't imagine that they would be in for a one seed, uh, even if they win the tournament. You know, Max said last week before the Villanova game that the brackets are pretty much done, um, you know, by the time the conference tournament starts, and it's just a little tweaks here and there. I think I think the top you can get is a two seed right now. I just don't know if there's, there's really anything you can do to, you know, are, are you going to do anything this week that's going to do be, you know, overdo what Houston's done all season? No. Purdue? No. UConn? No. You get to that fourth one, and then, you know, you're kind of splitting hairs. Is it Tennessee? Is it Arizona? You know, maybe North Carolina? I, I You know, I, unless something really weird happens this week, I, th- I don't think there's any chance for a one. But certainly a two seed, which would be the highest in, in program history, would be a heck of a, an accomplishment. Uh, you know, given what they've done this year and the fact they finished second in the league. John Bishop joining us right now. He will be on the call tomorrow night right after the program for Creighton in the Big East Tournament. Pre-game will start at 5.30. And as we mentioned a little bit earlier, they will most likely be playing Providence as the uh, Friars take on Georgetown a little bit later on today. So, John, let, let, let's assume that that assumption is correct. These two, these two teams split the regular season series. Uh, after the second loss, um, or after the second game, rather, which Creighton lost, they were able to finish the year seven and one. Only slipped up to St. John's at MSG. What 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 are the Jays most able to do differently? Do you think tomorrow, if that's who they end up facing, versus that that loss about a month ago? Uh, differently, I mean, you know, they've been a little bit better defensively since then. Certainly, you know, it's all going to come down to how you do against uh, against Carter because he was absolutely incredible, and then you know, Josh Odoro had a huge game, but. You know, I think there's no, there are no two better home atmospheres that really lift a team's ability to, to play above itself or at least meet itself 
than Omaha when it's on fire, and certainly Providence. Um, you know that that is an extreme. That has been an extremely tough place to win. Very tough for Creighton to win. They've only won a couple of times there. So I think the atmosphere in the Garden. You know, certainly there'll be more Providence fans there because of the proximity. But I think Creighton with a good game plan should be able to handle uh, Providence. Um, I think I think Kalkbrenner, uh will have a much better game than he did in the first game uh, against Oduro. Uh, and you know, uh, you know, the thing about the Garden is got to kind of got to get settled in. You got to get used to it. I, I don't think Jays did a particularly good job of that early on against St. John's. Uh, but now that they've been in the building, and it, it is a different shooting atmosphere than certainly anything that you know that they've ever had before, um, because it is so it is so very dark in there, um, and it just gives you a very different background of what's going on. Um, but now that they've been through that, I think it's going to help them a little bit. And the fact that Providence has played a game already, and it's going to be an emotional game too, because they got to go up against Ed Cooley for the third time, and you know it it it, it took a lot out of them the first game. Uh, second game, maybe be not so much, but this one, you know, certainly with a season on the line, because Providence is playing for a chance to get off and get onto the right side of the bubble. Um, but I think Creighton should be able to take care of business because it's not like playing at the dunk. We now know that if, if they do get Providence, the Friars will bring in the Big East Player of the Year. Devin Carter gets ch- uh, chosen as Player of the Year in the Big East. Obviously, it was probably between he and Baylor Shireman. What do you think of the decision? Honestly, if it wasn't going to be Baylor, this would have been my choice. I, I'm I'm ha- I'm happy. I would have been happy either way. I'm actually happy, you know, for Baylor because now maybe he's got a little chip on his shoulder. <laughs> um, because I think he felt like he was good enough to be Big East Player of the Year, and probably felt he should have been Big East Player of the Year, even though they didn't, you know, outwardly say it. Matt kind of downplayed it the other day at the press conference. But there's no question. I mean, we did the stats comparison last week on the program, and I mean they're very very close. I would have been disappointed. Um, not that he's not a good player, but I would have been disappointed if it would have gone to Newton because the whole idea of the best player on the best team is, is just a lazy narrative on my part. This is an individual award. This is not about, you know, being the best player on the best team. This is about who the best individual was. And I can't argue with Devin Carter as the best individual. This guy is an absolute gamer. We saw what he did against Creighton. We've seen what he's done all season. He has a knack for you know, coming up with the big play at the right moment when his team absolutely needs him. There is no question. Um, if you wanted to define most outstanding or most valuable player as take this dude off of this team and that team becomes a much lesser version of themselves, Devin Carter is maybe the best pick because Providence would be lost at sea without him. Now, you could also use that logic and say, if you take Kalkbrenner off the blue chain, sure. it changes everything because how important he is on the – defensive side as well as the offensive side but yeah i'm happy with the decision i mean i think it's a i think it's a good decision um he's a hell of a player and like i said maybe it'll give baylor a little shot in the arm and he'll be a little motivated um to go out and and show what he's you know capable of and maybe have a you know doug mcdermott type game like he did in his first game at uh, msg against DePaul 10 years ago well, John, uh, we appreciate your time today. We know that you're busy, whether it's uh, talking to us or celebrating America. Uh, I will say USA. this. I'm going to put in a grum ball, John, and I'm going to say that Trev Alberts is back, folks. Oh. Well, so now you're going to do it. I'm going to do it. He I'm just gonna... missed you, John. That's all it was. I, I just needed to talk to you. I needed to hear your Jays takes, and now I'm like, you know what? I'll say it. Yeah, Trev's going to be back. How do you like them grum balls? Mm, well, I mean, the, the thing is already, you know, sullied, so I guess. It couldn't hurt. I mean, you'd make a lot of people wow. happy, wow. I think, around here if it did happen. It, if anything, they just need to come to a decision soon so Jack Mitchell can enjoy the rest of his vacation. Yeah, seriously. Because, yeah. You know, the fact that he is spending so much time on Twitter right now, it's like, guess what? Nothing. If he, if he leaves, he leaves. There's not a damn thing you can do about it. Go enjoy the beach. Go enjoy your vacation. Stop worrying about Trev Albers. Yeah, exactly. Go back to your vacation. Uh, all right, so the grum ball remains perfect. We'll see if it remains perfect. I nailed uh, I nailed the, the Greg McDermott stuff, John. How about that? We didn't even get a chance to talk about that. Oh, did you hear I also no, said the did. snow was done on Friday? How about that? Yeah, no, no, don't do that. I'm, I'm, I'm fully expecting, I'm, honestly, I'm fully expecting not to be able to get home on Saturday night, hopefully <laughs> Saturday night from New York City because nice. it'll be snowed in in Omaha. Nice. All right, uh, talk to you later, John. Have a great call tomorrow. Sorry that we have to get off a little early for you. Oh, I know. I know. I know it breaks your heart, but uh, it does. just enjoy the extra daylight. It does not look like it is freaking four o'clock here. It is crazy. Yeah, it's very cloudy here in Omaha today.
the chance. Oh, uh, well, it's bright and sunny here. Yeah. All right. Bye-bye, John. Bye, John. Bye-bye. All right. That's John Bishop. He'll be on the call tomorrow. And yes, I just put in the grum ball. Sorry, Nick. He's back. Folks. There you go. How do you like them apples? Thanks for joining us, everybody, on this Wednesday. Uh, can we talk about anything else now we, that's settled? We probably can, but you know what? Why don't we come back? We'll reset. Okay. And we'll talk a little bit more about Trev. The announcement, I'm going to make it officially right now. Dumb debates will go on later on this hour. The people need it. The Brian Christopherson will still be a guest, so that's also going to happen. And... I don't know. We'll talk about other stuff too. Oh, we have so many topics. So many topics. Mm. You know, I wanted to make fun like, of Nick Saban. I wanted to make fun of Scott Van Pelt, and I love Scott Van Pelt. Oh, are we going to talk about Garrett Cole? No. Why would we talk about Garrett Cole? Because Herzoba. he's going to be out for one to two months now. You just Josh. broke the news to me. He's Nick. going to Doctor Reattached to look at his ligaments. That's news to me. Wow. Look it, at that. that just broke about an hour ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. See. Hey. Yesterday, you didn't know Chris Jones had. had I did uh, not. Yeah. Returned to the true. Chiefs. The Yankees season is over. You heard it here first. Wow. Yeah. Look at this. They got nobody. Look at this. They have one Soto, and that's it. All right. Trev's going to be back. That's going to be uh, what I say. The Grum Ball is in. He's returning. Uh, we can uh, talk about this a little bit more. And then, yes, Nick, we can talk about anything else. Nice. You can decide the topics nice. that are related to basketball or football. Why not baseball? That are related to basketball or football. Fine. You can decide. Or basketball. Or, or basketball. Or, Nick, what about football? Or what basketball. About, what about football? More to come. 1620 The Zone.
Sports Flash. What? Time for an unsportsmanlike conduct Sports Flash update. Sports Flash. From the Sports Flash Sports Desk. The news that we have been waiting for has arrived. Garrett Cole's out. No, it is not about Garrett Cole. Why do you hate Garrett Cole so much? Josh Peterson. Care about out on Garrett, Garrett Cole. Cole? The Yankees were finally going to get a World Series. I can think of at least two people that Sports are going to be huge fans of this news. Maybe. I know it'll affect at least two people. John Schreiner? Dan Campanen? No, not those two people. Though I don't know who John Schreiner's favorite Sports NFL team is. Oh. The Washington Commanders. Sports oh, God. Oh, with their cool black uniforms. No. The Titans are signing Calvin Ridley for a four-year $92 million uh-huh. deal. That's a sports flash. The Riddler. Is that what do, does anyone call him that? We could they now. Should. That's, yeah. a great, that's a great call, Nick. We could now. He, uh, yeah. All right, uh, I put in a grum ball in all seriousness. Oh, okay. Put in the grum ball. Trev Alberts, back, folks. Uh, I was just told that it sounds like AM might have jumped the gun Ooh. with the leakage in the story earlier today. You got to get leakages checked out. Uh huh. But we see rich people be petty about a lot of things. Could this be them being petty and Trev Alberts told them no? And they're like, well, we'll stick it to the man here. That what a would, classic, would, wouldn't it be amazing? Classic Jimmy conspiracy theory. <laughs> he can't just take the news that I gave him. I gave him news. I say, here is your plate, Jimmy. Check out the news. Jimmy then has to go. I want my cake. But too. what if the news is also? I want fake my cake somehow. and I want to eat it too. You can't. Do I mean, that to me, while I have my finger on a button for another sound effect. Is the news not really fake news though? It's not. It wasn't true. It wasn't. But uh, and and this is why. This is why. So earlier I mentioned. When reporters use terms like, uh, let's see, expected or targeting, I always view those words as, yep, it's almost done. They're locking it in. But if they are wrong, it does give them cover, them being the journalists that are reporting this. It does give them cover to say, whoa, 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 I'm Pete Thamel. I said that they expected to hire it. They expected to hire him, and then it went sideways. I expected Jimmy to not have a conspiracy theory, but then he had <laughs> oh, one. Well, that but, I, on you. but I expected it. Mm. Um, but Trev, Trev is saying? Trev is, that's what I'm saying. Trev it's a celebration! It's a celebration! Uh, <laughs> uh, so, but... I, what Celebrate you said, good times, come what on. What you said, yeah, I'd be a little surprised by that. Uh, the, it seems like it'd be on brand. How is that where Texas your mind goes people. at first? It's like Trev is back well, what and is you're the, like... What is the reason for jumping the gun, though? Because they thought it was almost done. They thought that it was done. And they are, you know, they... they Pete probably scratches their back. They probably scratch his back. Brent Zwerneman, they probably scratch each other's backs. Yeah. And they're like, hey, here's a little here's a little morsel. You can have this piece of information as a treat. Oh, thanks for the treat, Dad. Yeah, and then he tweets out, here's a daddy treat. <laughs> and then he sends it out. <laughs> and then they're like, awesome. <laughs> You know, hey, I daddy's home. Lick, lick, lick. But you know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't have to go to like the crazy, you know, nooks and crannies. Of it's the okay I don't for a think fi- it's that crazy, Jimmy. It's a, sometimes it's okay for a fish to be a fish. We can just take it at face value. Can we just take it at face value? Turns back, folks. Can we just take it at face value? A uh, trans- celebration. celebration. Premature leakage. It gets everyone exactly. We're all gonna be older men at some point. Yeah. At least I will be. I can't imagine there will be some premature leakage going on. Drip, drip into the toilet. You know how it's like, Nick. You know those words. He doesn't know. It's, it's he's, he, he stands. That's right. He's in his 20s. He's, well, he stands, so he doesn't I know. I am of standing. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Nick, you're a stander. That's a uh, callback, folks. Uh, a text from the 402 says, does Jimmy know if chemtrails <laughs> might have anything to do with Trev staying? I'm hearing some stuff. How do you feel about the frogs, Jimmy? How do we feel, Jimmy, about chemtrails? I, I don't know what that's in the reference. I don't know the reference. You don't. Know, you don't know the chemtrails thing. You are a man of multitudes. I'm Jimmy. so confused by you. Also jealous that he doesn't know about chemtrails. Uh, that the fact that I know about them means I've heard the theories of chemtrails. Is Jimmy? this the jet thing? Oh, okay, yeah. Jeff, yeah. No, it's, the, not not jet not jet fuel. Fuel. it's not jet that's fuel. It's not jet fuel. It's the jet thing. That's it's an different, Alex Jones thing. That's a different that's conspiracy. A, like theory. the white lines like, fig- fix the atmosphere or whatever. Uh, is that? Something. I thought the theory was that like it gave us diseases. It gives us diseases. Oh, I, I government thought government can control. It uh, changes the sexual orientation of frogs. Oh, nice. I thought it was like it fixed the hole in the atmosphere from the atom bomb. I've heard that one. Uh, by the way, uh, Ravi, not Lula, tweets oh. in and says, "Make that three people." 
we got three Titans fans in the audience. So we oh. have Josh Dodson, we have Robbie, and then we have Scott. Congrats on the Riddler. Yep, there you go. Congrats on the Riddler. Uh, also, 1620, the email just sent out a uh, uh, email with the subject line, Trev Alberts leaving Nebraska? Question mark. The answer is no, 1620, the email. The answer is subscribe today. No, the answer is no. Uh, Travis writes, Jimmy wants his cake and tinfoil hat, too. Yeah. Okay, I, I gotta have something to put the cake in if I don't eat it all. Why would you put the cake in the tinfoil <laughs> yeah, hat? That's all get... I got. If it's all I have, you want to save it, keep it nice and moist. You're gonna get head oils on the cake. Hmm. Uh, Happer's meme guy says nowhere else in America would speculation involving an AD uh, have led to this much mass hysteria, deep state, big football conspiracy to get the discourse away from basketball. Is that what this is? This you know, for time. weeks we just had Brunts on yesterday in the three o'clock hour, and one of the things that I asked Brunts was. You know, we're not really talking about football. Is this good? This is probably healthy for everybody, right? He's like, yeah, this is great. We don't have to ask, what are you excited for? With spring ball, everybody. Is that and now, Trev, maybe he's going to leave, and then he doesn't. Is this even more reason to blame Happer for this? For 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 weirdos like Connor Happer saying I that like basketball it. is better than football? I like it. You know, just because Trev. Is this about Garrett Cole again, Nick? Yeah. No. Tell us more about his elbow. I know we kind of took the football angle on this, but Trev leaving affects every other sport, too. Yeah, nobody cares. <laughs> Including basketball. Yeah, but we... But and yeah. baseball. It's about Matt Rule. It's and about, volleyball. It's about Matt, Matt Rule. It's about the bottom dollar. And maybe. the wrestling. Nobody ever thinks about Nebraska wrestling. Well, we're all worried. Was, With Trev in charge, what if, we're all what if, worried. What if this this is the leverage he was looking for? I'm not staying unless I can cancel unless the we, wrestling unless program. we get rid of wrestling again. Mm. Uh, Nick, not Grim, tweets oh. in, or Ba. Uh, Jimmy, every time there's a story that breaks, and it's Charlie from Always Sunny in Philadelphia. <laughs> I applied for the read about something. I applied for the role. I didn't get it. Yeah, <laughs> they were like, "Yeah, you're a, you're little, a little too realistic." Yeah, it's we need we need someone who's gonna act, not Pepe play Sylvia. Themselves. Pepe Sylvia. Pepe Sylvia. Oh, uh, so yeah, there you go. How about that? How about that? He's oh. back. The pod all right, boys. so and Texas A and M is just. Boys. We're all trying doomers to get, for trying no to get reason. Back at him yeah, for now we're going to have Brian Christopherson on in a few minutes, um, and then we will move on it. We'll do dumb debates. We'll do a lot of other things. But, Just wait for BC to be like, yeah, never mind. <laughs> so a couple of things. So first of all, we put on the board earlier what time the announcement would come. So Nick said tomorrow at 10 a.m., right, Nick? Is that what that says? Yep. That's an A. I said today at 605. Conspiracy Jimmy, as Happer wrote, said today at 3.35. And I was the only one that said he would be back. You were. People Shout forget. out to Jimmy People for that. People forget. Uh, Happer said today by 4.45. Now, technically, none of us... Well, you're incorrect. So your, your prediction has not happened. Technically, the other three of us are still up in the air because this was not official. Or this oh, was, you know... I true. I am just making a proclamation. I'm making a prediction. Maybe based off of something I've heard. So that's what I am doing right now. But we are waiting for the official I ain't going nowhere tweet as we all want. That is true. Happer is still in the running and could win this on the nose if we get in the next 30 minutes. He could. He could. If in, in, it, okay. That means no dumb debate. No, 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 no. Nick, no. no we it, will do dumb debates. I like debates. dumb debates. We're going to do dumb With debates Jimmy today. here, could you imagine? The only reason we wouldn't be doing dumb debates is if Trev actually left. That is true. If at 445 he was like, Peace out, bitches. We were like, well, rats. I guess it's time <laughs> to do disappear. Dumb, time to do dumb like that, like that meme. Uh -huh. Yes, yeah, just yeah. Unless so Trev pulls the ultimate double swerve. The like, I'm actually out. It's not a celebration. <laughs> so all right, so, it's a celebration. so that's what's going on. That's what's going on as we keep an eye on that. That's the important thing in all of this. Which of us is going to be correct? Oh, you monster! Giant head Jed is a Titans fan. Oh, Jed! You jerk. Jed! I'm so sorry. We forgot you about you, Jed. Congrats oh, on the Riddler, so Jed. That's four. That's Gosh, four. All the Titans. Why do you fans. like the Titans? Oh, and they keep it rolling. They also got Mason Rudolph. Oh, that's yeah. I don't know if I'd keep yeah. that rolling. That's not <laughs> keeping it rolling. Let it roll. Let it roll. In the words of George Harrison. Or keep rolling, rolling, rolling. In the words keep of rolling, Fred rolling, Durst. Rolling, roll. Is that Fred Durst? Yes. Limp Biscuit. Okay, Limp Biscuit. Someone, yeah, I always forget that that's a Limp Biscuit song. <laughs> yeah, people, I do. People try to forget that. Uh, Happer's Meme Guy says, poll question, has Trev Albert seen the Wolf of Wall Street or nor the reference of the I Ain't Leaving Chip? What a question. Mm. That movie came out a little over a decade ago. I bet he's seen I it would at be, least I once. would be amazed if he doesn't know. What well, maybe means. it was 2014. That's a great movie. Have you, ever seen, a, yeah. have you ever seen Wolf of Wall Street? Wolf of Wall Street. Multiple know, times. I don't know, Nick. I'm Many just, times. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. How dare you? Uh, hmm. Has he seen? All right. I'm going to put that poll question out. Has Trev Albert seen Wolf of Wall Street? I bet he's seen it at least once. There's no what? way, right? It's such a good movie. He, he does press conferences. We can make Sybil ask him, right? Uh, At the press conference? Yeah, why not? 
Hmm. It'll add levity to this weird situation. Yeah. All right. So we'll uh, we'll ask that question, and uh, we'll see if we can get an answer. I definitely don't think that Sip would want to ask that question at the press conference, but hmm. obviously you never know. So yeah, you can vote on that. Uh, J- Asian Joe says, "I am not a Titans fan. I don't even like to remember them." Gross. Oh. <laughs> so there you go. Joe says, "No, thank you." Is this, is does Joe like football? Well, he NFL listens, football. He listens to our show, oh. so he definitely likes football. The whole question. I've never known like what his team is. That's a great question. I mean, I'd be stunned if there's someone out there who's like, I can't really stand football, but I love the grum. I mean, I'd be like, wow, you are quite the person. The answer that was me before I started producing the show. You listen to the show anyway, Nick? Yeah. What I'd, listen, I'd tune in sometimes. What sometimes. Uh, text from the forward. She says Jim Morrison, not George Harrison. <laughs> no, no, no. Texter. Uh, I was talking about the George Harrison song. Let it roll. It's from his first album. Mm-hmm. It's called uh, The Ballad of Frankie something. Josh is of the Beatles. I the, trust him the here. The Ballad of Frankie. What was that? Some, ba- or Frankie Sir Lee? Frankie Crisp. It's a great song. <laughs> Sir Frankie Crisp. Nick, I know how you don't like reviewing old music. Turn on that that song. The whole album is good. It's a double album. Hit that, hit that song up after work today. The Ballad of Frankie Crisp. It's a good song. I mean, there's a difference between reviewing and listening. I love to listen to old music. Listen to the listen to the song. You don't have to listen to the whole album. I think it's a very good no, album. No, give us an entire review of the whole album. I want know. your takes on that song, though. I Heck, love the you name. Could, you could come back to one of our future segments today with a bump of that song. Oh. And I'd be okay. It's a good song. Let it roll. They used it in uh, How I Met Your Mother. That was how I... Oh, I for sure have heard it. Belmont though. Bill. All Things Must Pass is a 10 out of 10. Hell, yes, it is, good Belmont take. Bill. It's a great album. I've always been sad that those songs could have been Beatles songs mm. because he wrote them on. They were like, oh, George doesn't know what he's talking about. Have you? <laughs> Poor George. Uh, May he rest in power. Beatles related, not related to anything Trevor. else. No, George Harrison. Wow. Jimmy. Jeez, Trevor's in Jimmy. power. You've seen Boyhood, right? Yeah. Remember that scene where his dad made him that custom burnt album where they took all the Beatles solo stuff and he put it back to back to back to each other? Vaguely. And he said they all elevate each other because it's a Beatles. It's like it's the Beatles. I like that take. But That's it's a all good their take. solo stuff. There was the Paul McCartney song that was in the movie we watched recently. I've listened to it after some of my runs as a treat. Lately. Oh, yeah. That's your one song. It's, my one, it's, become, it's become my one song. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a podcast boy, Jimmy, or today a radio boy. As my headphones died, I was listening to the crossover on my lap band as I ran and ran and ran. Lap band, Josh. Wait, miles do? What? How many miles do you today? Uh, 15. Oh, boy. Yeah. But it didn't work. Not to brag. Not to brag. Not a little, a little bit brag. Yeah, a little bit. All right. When we return, uh, Brian Christopherson will join us. We will talk about the news of the day with him. Again, nothing is official right now. So we're all kind Happy of. you're still in the running. We're all kind of just. Hey, I am too. For the record, I said 605. Also, oh, that's me. true. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, really, Jimmy, your guess the, was just so out The answer is I... everybody is in the running except for you, actually. Yeah. You Even just... though I think you're going to be right about him staying. You were just so outlandishly wrong in your time picking that I just said ruled you out. Or wow. Outlandishly wrong, Jimmy. I still have an hour and a half to go, man. I got plenty of time. That's true. You might actually See, be Because right. my conspiracy theory is that the university always wants to announce stuff after the grum because then they can do it during their show. That's true. They hate us. Jerks. Exactly. But then you'll get it during your show. That's right. Thanks, university. That'd be great. We're too powerful. They All know right. it. BC is up next here on 1620 The Zone. But first, Josh Peterson for my friends at the FanDuel Sportsbook where they are putting the ball in your court. That's a pun on hoops, friends. For the rest of the NBA season, right now, new customers can get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That means $200 in bonus bets in your pocket if that first bet wins. Just go to FanDuel.com slash 1620 today and you got the games tonight in the NBA. Not to mention, it is college basketball playoff and college basketball playoff adjacent season right now xavier 46 butler 45 and live line for you how about this one xavier minus four and a half if you want to bet on xavier to win and cover and look at that it just adjusted to minus two and a half that is what's awesome about FanDuel. among the many things that's awesome is they have the live lines that literally are updating on your screen you don't have to click Refresh. You don't have to go to another page. No, they are just right there for you on the main page. Go to FanDuel.com slash 1620 and make that first bet a layup. Get $200 in bonus bets if that first bet wins. FanDuel.com slash 1620. 21 plus and present in Iowa. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued is not withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-BETS-OFF.
Welcome back. It is on Sportsmanlike Conduct here on 1620 The Zone and 1620 The Zone. Josh Peterson, Jimmy Allen with you today. John will be back on the air on The Zone tomorrow after us uh, as Creighton will play their first game of the Big East Tournament pregame tomorrow night at 5.30. Tip coming just after 6 o'clock. Let's go to the 42 Degrees The Source hotline and welcome in from Husker 24-7 Sports. It's our good friend Brian Christofferson, BC. How are you? Not too bad. How are you guys? Good. Yeah. When Nick called, he said, what was the word you used, Nick? Surprisingly calm? Yes. I believe he said that you sounded surprisingly calm. BC, should we read anything into you being surprisingly calm after, what, nine hours of speculation today from all parties? Uh, no. I was uh, honored that you asked me to be on today, uh, on a day <laughs> where you have to really talk in circles, which, let's face it, we do, right? Yep. I mean, for um, – and nobody – I feel like can talk in circles like me. Um, so, so you got the right guy for the job. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know anything. Um, I was told, you know, when the reports were coming out in the morning, um, it, I, I don't know if you guys had the same read on it. I did, but it felt like on some of the reporting, it, especially down in Houston and, you know, even some national guys, there was an expectation like this is happening, yep. right? In the, I mean, it was very close to it. And I had a couple people I really trust. Um, you know, they're connected and I, they don't just talk to talk. And they weren't, they thought otherwise. And um, so about 1030 or so, I've, I've sort of since about 1030 this morning been on, I don't know how it's going to go, but I, I've not a, I was not assuming it was like a done deal or anything that he was leaving. And um, it's kind of just stayed in place since then with the occasional Doug Ewald updates from, <laughs> from media reporters, um, which I, I appreciate him doing. Um, so, you know, that that's where I am. I, I don't know what's going to happen, but I, you, you would have thought, honestly, when the reports came out, I don't know if it was like 9 a.m. or so, that... Um, if it were if it were like in ink or the ink was setting, we would have heard something by now. Um, so it, it, it's been an interesting silence that the more you hear it, you actually think it's more tilted toward he's sticking around, but we'll see. Are, are you surprised at all it got to this point where it kind of felt like to your point that they said, hey, you know, it's basically a done deal? Yeah, and I don't know, you know, you don't know where they got that from. You know, I think maybe getting leaked out of down from Texas A&M's end. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm surprised by it. it, it the, I mean, the initial headline guy uh, shocked me in the morning. Yeah. And I, I'm not, I'm not a person who just like thinks like everything's always hunky dory or you know. I mean, they've been without a president. Uh, you know, it was seven months ago, uh, August 24th, I believe, was the date when Ted Carter announced he was leaving, and um, Trev Alberts is taking on the biggest. Uh, it's by far the most ambitious project anyone has ever taken on at the university with the stadium. I mean, they were, we're going to implode a, a part of the stadium, you know, a hundred year old stadium and still work around it and play. And you got to have a very precise plan uh, with everybody, you know, rowing the oars the same direction. And I'm, I'm not saying that's specifically what it's about, but you think about stuff like that. It's like the, you don't know who your boss is um, and you're kind of waiting. And, and Matt rule was so tight with uh, Ted Carter too, and liked so much about him. And you, he's, I'm sure waiting to see, you know, who's going to be in that chair and you want it to be someone that, you know, is understands the, the, the project you're setting forth on and like how big a deal it is and how you have to nail it. And that uh, you're going to have a good partner there. And, um, Again, there's a lot of connecting the dots and kind of speculation on stuff. But uh, if, if you say talk out loud or talk in circles about something, I probably go toward like the, the president situation. And like at some point soon, you got to get that resolved and you got to know who, who's who and uh, and who you're working with. You know, couldn't agree more. BC, Brian Christofferson joining us right now on the 42 Degrees, the source hotline. BC, I was thinking uh, earlier today just about the the recent months and how there was that story that came out at the beginning of November from the Flatwater Free Press uh, that t went back to his time at UNO. Uh, you just mentioned the the fundraising for the stadium. Um, obviously, the lawsuit with the women's basketball team. Like, I, I almost wanted to put all of that into like bucket one, and then bucket two was the leadership issues 
or the the you know void in leadership right now, given some of the things that have happened above him. What, do you think that the concerns with Trev were would it, it, like obviously he went down this road to some degree? Was it more because of Bucket One or was it more because of Bucket Two? Do you think? I I'm not sure, but I, I just go back to you. You need to know, like like at some point in a decent time table who you who you're working with and i don't know that that's what this is this is all about but you want to feel like um you know everybody's on the same page on uh not not let's forget just about the stadium issue we're talking about a, a pretty perilous time in college athletics yes. where, where you have to um you have to make sure nebraska is positioned um, to be one of the haves and not the have nots, because that's what we're talking about. And you're in good shape because you're in the big 10 and all that, but you shouldn't take that for granted. Um, I think everything Trev has done, um, is, is well, he, he plans this stuff out and he thinks about the big picture. Like don't think for a second, he didn't think about the impact it has for Nebraska, not just for women's sports, but when you put on, uh, the volleyball match in Memorial Stadium, and you draw national attention to your athletic department like that, and what it means for women's sports, but also it just shows like the the type of athletic department you are um, in a big sense, and what your brand is about. Um, all that stuff, um, you know, is done with 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 some purpose, and um, you got to have people that that, that want it the same way you do. And um, I don't know, I don't have a finger to point at anybody on the board of regents or anything like that specifically. I don't know all that inside baseball to the degree. I think some are speculating on, I just know that um, it feels like it's been a while with the presidential search. It feels like uh, we haven't heard as much about it um, as sometimes. And so it's something that when I think of this issue today, I, I, I do ponder it, like how, what, what part that plays in it. And also, I listen to Trev talk. I mean, I listen mm -hmm. to him talk about the stadium um, project and, um, you know, what's at stake there. And also, you know, in recent interview, like I, you know, it don't have a president right now. It makes it a little hard and stuff like that. I mean, so you listen to that stuff and it, it, I, I guess that's why maybe I connect one dot there. If Trev stays, does it say more about Trev or more about the university being able to make it work? Oh, I don't know. I mean, both. I, I hope they do make it work. I think Trev loves Nebraska, and uh, I think a lot of people connected to it really think a lot of him and what he mm -hmm. he can do and how he's a big thinker. Like he's a he's a he he takes on big ideas that other people would be afraid of. Um, and I mean, I think the stadium project is a is a dangerous project to have to take on as an athletic director, but a necessary one. And he's, he's willing to tackle that. And um, that, that's why there's a lot at stake right now that you don't want to, you've got a guy who's already got a lot of irons in the fire, right. On that sort of stuff. And he, he knows like what, what you're trying to do and uh, doesn't need catching up on that. Um, so it's a big moment, uh, I think to, to keep him around, but um, yeah, they, this is a, I mean, it's a huge story today. I get, I get yeah. why we're not talking about anything else because um, people here are are kind of tired of like it feels like a, a shoe just drops all the time when they, just when you kind of think things are going how you want them to, and they actually are on the court right now. Like, I mean, you have yeah. to say there's been some things where you're starting to feel better about things. Like both the hoops teams are gonna, you know, be in the dance. Uh, you're, you're playing a women's hoops game in front of a, I know Caitlin Clark to draw, but you take them to the wire and you, you play like that. And then your men's team is having the year they are and wrestling's really looking up and it feels like the coaches are very connected and kind of in it together. And so I don't want to make this at all. Like I think the athletic department itself is in, uh, you know, big trouble or they're like struggling with each other i don't know that that's happening i think there's a lot of good stuff there but that's why this this headline i think startled people so much because actually on the court there's a lot of reasons to be optimistic right now um and obviously um i think there's some of that with football too even though they went five and seven bc i could not agree with you more man like yeah. the, the one of the first things that i thought about this morning was wow and for all weeks to happen it's Th you know, two days before they're going to play in the Big Ten tournament, uh, a week ish away from playing in their first NCAA tournament in a decade. Thus, the first NCAA tournament that he will be athletic director for. And you know, I know what would happen if they get bounced one and one and done, whether it's this week or next. 
how much people would be asking, did this hang over everything? And I guess people will still have that question, but it's like, man, things finally seem at least on the, on the surface. Um, it seems like things are finally going in the direction that fans have been hoping for, for a long time. Yeah. I mean, uh, yesterday, honestly, around Lincoln, it, there's a, there's a happy vibe. I mean, I, I was with, around the fastball team, so of course there's going to be that, but, um, I mean, that's a program where you're, you're thinking like, man, man, they could be on the verge of history here. And so, yeah, it was, it was a little buzzkill to even have this, uh, this headline out there and, and maybe it's for good reason. It'll all get taken care of and, um, things are going to work out fine, but yeah, it, it definitely was a few hours that I think that, uh, have jolted people after mm-hmm. sort of a, a feel good period. Um, you know, not and with football, I think with, with the Ryle assigning and all that stuff, there's, there's reason for hope there. And I think people kind of like what Matt rules about and how he's building it. So, um, you don't want to disrupt that. I get that. Um, you know, there's Nebraska has kind of struggled with getting that president, AD and head coach all going at the same time where it just feels good. And it felt like they had it with, with Carter and Trev and, and rule. It really did. Um, Frost always talked about that, but it never happened. Um, never came close. And you, you thought you had it. And then the Carter thing happened. You're like, Oh, that's a bummer where they still got two out of three. And so right. that's where I think people are really like, Oh man, now I don't like the numbers of this game. Um, if you, if you would take another out of the equation. So that's why everybody's unsettled the way they are today. Brian Christofferson, you can read his work at Husker 24 seven sports also, uh, does various podcasts, including a hoops cast that he does with Michael Bruns. It went up uh, a little bit ago as you want your hoops fix a couple days before and uh, about eight thirty tip there in Minneapolis, BC. We appreciate you joining us on uh, such short notice again about something that officially we know nothing at this point in time. Uh, you did a great job talking around and around it. We appreciate the time. <laughs> that's, that's what I try to do. I, I, I go round and round. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Thanks Brian. BC. Brian Christopherson joining us on the 42 degrees, the source hotline. So yeah, as we continue to say still nothing uh, official, we are all waiting and waiting for anything to, uh, to come out. But as of this moment, still, still nothing. nothing, still nothing. And so we continue to look at the clock. It's 445 <gasps> on a Wednesday. Oh, that I was going to oh, say that's, that's clock. where we're, Sorry. P- we're passing Happer's predicted The less time. fun clock. But Nick, it is 445 on a Wednesday, which means we're going to have dumb debates and talking about whether the Yankee season is done because Garrett Cole is out for one to two months. Is that your dumb debates question this week? Yeah, sure. Why not? All right. We'll tackle that question when we return. Uh, also, another uh, comment about Jimmy and conspiracies. That is sure to be it's always good. good. It's always good. Uh, sales director Stacy writes, I feel a little bad for Hoiberg, co Big Ten coach of the year, March Madness birth overshadowed today. Yeah, the Whoa, timing. Co Big Ten coach of the year, Stacy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's coach of the year. He's co Big Ten coach of the year. That is what he is. Coach of the year, he along is- with another person who is also Big Ten coach of the year. Alan says maybe Trev just wanted to see how much people would miss him if he leaked, or so he leaked the news. <laughs> oh, it's like how you want to. You ever think about what it would be like to, your to hear your, yeah to hear yeah. your eulogy? Like if you were an edgy teenager like me, and you're like nobody would care if I'm gone. Edgy, you're edgy. I, Jimmy, I was pretty edgy. He's yeah. Have you seen what Nick looks like still? Jimmy, I used to write bad poetry and post oh, it on Facebook. Oh, Nick, you should read that. Does that make you nope. edgy? Dumb debate. Should Nick read his poetry? The on content the air? did. Should Nick host a podcast where he just reads his old poetry? Oh, it's would, on my I deactivated would, Facebook account. I would listen. So it's never going to see the light of day oh, again. I'm gonna I'm gonna email Zuckerberg. And what was like, the uh, What was the like blog social media? What was it called? It was like. Oh, yeah, he was probably uh, too young for that. The one that started, Zanga? I was going to say Zanga. Zanga. I, I wasn't heard of, a Zanga. I've heard of it. Heard I wasn't. Of Zanga? I, I dated a, Zanga a, a girl who had a Zanga. I feel like Nick would have been a Zanga. Guy. I had a blog spot for a while when right. I was 12. It's, same thing. Uh, I don't know if we have had any dumb debates questions today because of all of the crap that unfolded. So if you have any dumb debates questions, get them in right now. Hashtag, Hashtag dumb, dumb debates. debates. There you go. On uh, the JTech Construction Zone Twitter feed, if you want to email or comment on the YouTube page, yeah. or text machine, do whatever you want. Just get in touch with us. Get us your dumb debates questions. We will tackle those in the happy hour, which starts next Woo! on 1620 The Zone.
Throw. 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 Dumb debates is canceled. The happy hour's on the air. Wow. <laughs> wow. I've said it three times on the show. Nebraska athletics, the gift that keeps on giving. We just finished with BC. He was in such a good mood. We all, the Grumball dies. It's over. The Point Grumball. At the Point at the sign. Oh, there we go. Oh, you know what, Nick? I'm gonna. I'm just gonna tweet that out. That's such a good. Oh, I hate your friend for that. Yeah, that's so. It's so well done. It's just such a. Good, Sam such a good says text. most shocking moment in Grum history. Oh my gosh, uh, Nick, give us a let's let's do a proper let's do a proper sports flash for this announcement. Sports flash. Time for an unsportsmanlike conduct sports flash update. Sports flash. From the sports flash sports desk. The uh, two reporters, the first was Amy Just. The second was Sam McEwen. I will read Amy's tweet since she had it first. Breaking news, Trev Alberts has decided to take the Texas A&M athletic director job per source. Dude, my stomach hurts right now. Uh, Sam McEwen, he writes, Per a source, Trev Alberts is leaving Nebraska for the Texas A&M job. Was there Sports any coincidence that a uh, ambulance just went down Dodge Street Sports as you were reading that? As my friend said earlier, Sports just remember it's never so bad at Nebraska that it can't just get a little worse. Wow. And yeah, now uh, the news is trickling in. I just got a text message from somebody that I trust saying he is out. Dude, I'm sitting right here. He is he <laughs> is out. Uh, wow. So the reaction from Nick. In the moment when we got the news uh, during the break, a large F-bomb, a very large F-bomb. Yep. He was very excited, very excited for Dumb Debates. My favorite segment of the week. I look forward to it. I wake. I woke up this morning bright-eyed, bushy-tailed. It's like, I can't wait to debate. Uh, let's see. A, uh, another report coming in from the producer of Hale Varsity Radio. Yep. And uh, Nebraska Athletic Department had been informed via email that he has accepted the job. Wow. Wow. I mean, so what it, just happened in the last hour? Great question, man. Great question. Um, you know, I, uh, you know, all, all kidding aside about having fun with the old uh, Grumball, I certainly would not have done that um, if I was not pretty confident that, you know, it was going to happen. Uh, Alex and Lincoln, people forget Jimmy is wrong. Chris and Montana, you're effing kidding me. Mm. Oh, my God. Uh our boss, Mark Onweiler. Well, this has been a weird day. Nick G, not me. Not you. Says unbelievable in all caps. Yeah, I think the thing that I am shocked by is not the news itself, but that I thought that the, that the tide had turned. You know, I mean, we were joking about it with BC, but when we brought him on. He just, was surprisingly cold. And, and you know, I, I, I know that, that Brian, I think Brian does a really good job of talking about the team because Brian is not going to be someone who is like swayed. Brian doesn't like getting down into the into the muck with like the, the drama of everything. Brian doesn't want to cover, I don't think, a program like that. Um, I don't think any of us do. I think we all want to cover a program that feels buttoned up, that feels like it's going in a in a good direction. Um I think and that is not this, it this right now. It doesn't feel like it's going um, in a good direction. Uh, well, we were getting reports that it was basically off the table. It seemed like it. Yeah. Again, it, it absolutely it Gary, absolutely seemed like Gary Sharp was tweeting out cryptic tweets as yeah. well. It kind of felt like everybody around around the know was getting the information that he was staying. And yeah. now Sam says Brian is reverse Jack Mitchell. Great way to describe him. Great way to describe <laughs> him. He, uh, you know, he is someone who, again, he in all seriousness, I think that, you know, bringing him on and, and getting his measured opinions kind of coming off of the heels of that. You mentioned Gary's tweet. It seemed like, OK, well. Probably going to move in a different direction. Um, and now we're getting tweets like this from Jay. Trev is about to go down as the biggest trader in Nebraska history. He'll never be welcomed back. Wow. 
Whams1972 on YouTube writes, what a disaster. Go Jay says Jimmy takes another L. Many people happy to remind Jimmy that he predicted this would not happen, though I will throw my hat in the ring that I gave a grum ball that he would return. So yeah. Congrats to Connor Haber. Yeah. No, he no. had 445. It happened at 452. I am right. Oh. Yep. Sorry, everybody. We're going to have to go. Have now, to... now uh, t- technically, we are still waiting on the uh, official. Yes. The official. Te- technically, it has an official. Oh, uh, here we go. So. Here we go, Jimmy. Oh, so that means technically I'm still in the race. You are still in the race. Yes. Yeah. Lo- I mean, actually, there's a probably very good likelihood that Nick is going to be the one that ends up. Uh, maybe. We, if he has informed folks, we have an hour and eight minutes for the news to officially come down. Give us a call, 402-951-1620. Big Trev uh, overreaction. If, yeah, if you would like to, to let us know how you feel about this. Uh, Travis writes, being a fan of Nebraska is just dumb. Tony says, recall the entire Board of Regents. Uh, Nick writes, so we need a president, chancellor, and an AD. Yes, that is correct. I'm glad we're checking the uh, the gauge of where we are. Wow. Absolutely. Not much of a depth chart up there, is there? Uh, and it looks like, I just want to make sure. More like a death chart, am I right? Hey, yo. I just want to make sure, because uh, Robin Wash just put out a story that is titled uh, Four Takeaways on uh, Trev Albert's departure to Texas A&M from Steve Sipple. So they are going uh, as well with the mindset that it is officially done. But as, uh... <laughs> oh, by the way, they do have a chancellor. They, yeah, Nick, they do, they do have a chancellor. So they need a president and an athletic director. Um, but yeah, they do indeed have a chancellor. 402-951-1620. If you would like to uh, give us some of your thoughts, Max Olson, friend of the Grum. Just put out a tweet a couple of minutes ago. Nebraska AD Trev Alberts is leaving for Texas A&M. Staff has now been notified. Source tells The Athletic. So there you go. Yeah. So uh, Reports about an email being sent from Trev are, co- are coming down the pipe, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Man. Wow. I, it's funny. The you difference know, 20 minutes can make. Yeah, and so uh, Josh writes, worst day in athletic program since ever. Man, I is Kevin Suits now reporting it? Um, Is, is this... That is this the worst day? Like, oh, I, I feel was like this worse than Georgia Southern. The, no, that was a great day because it led to frost. Oh, yeah, fire. Fair. No, but in all seriousness, yeah, a lot of people is this. That loss. I don't know if and I'm so I'm not asking the question from Josh. I'm not asking it from the perspective of like, you're an idiot, but I'm a, I'm asking genuinely, Jimmy, is this the worst day that the athletic department has ever had? Or what is this the worst day that the athletic department has had since? I, I mean, it, I, it, I mean, I don't know if we could call it the worst day because we don't know what the replacement situation would be. I mean, if if we somehow fall upwards, are we still having this conversation? I mean, it, I think it's one of those things. There's so Do much. You believe that though? I don't. I really don't because I think we we're in a really good spot with the guy we had. But I mean, if if there's a situation that they get a president that can go out and be uh, a lightning rod for uh, an athletic director that's going to change things, I don't know if you could necessarily call this a bad day. The fact that we don't know the outcome we don't have the ability to have hindsight right now i think completely changes the narrative of of, as far as the worst day it's bad it's definitely not good i don't know if i'm willing to call it the worst day josh says ted carter gone trev albert's gone matt rule gone riola's gone are we in hell this is worse than post osberg wow mikey mike responds to that josh saying josh no rule averages nine million a year and riola got two million in nil money look i I said this earlier and so the odd part about this whole discussion that we will now get to have all over again for the final hour of the show oh is that sorry nick no dumb debates today is that we kind of did it and so we were exploring we did it i entered today's show now i know you disagreed i entered today's show thinking this is it i i thought that he was gone and it's only within the last hour that i changed my tune only to be Wrong on that regard. So I was right in the in the aggregate, but wrong most recently. What and a so, sicko! Trip so, put in a full day's work and then left. <laughs> if you if you want a fun little story in our podcast feed, our radio replay feed, a uh, segment seven is Trev is staying. Segment eight is <laughs> Brian Christopherson. Then segment nine is Trev is leaving. Wow, that's going to be a story uh, in three parts. That's going to be quite the whiplash. I just heard from somebody as well that an email was sent to staff. Um, I am. A fascinated fascinated to see what is in that email ab i i it's gonna get announced at some point someone will share it release the emails i'm gonna see but his email i'm gonna see if i can get a hold of this i'm guessing i can't you, you probably uh, can but i would uh oh why do you have it you probably can i mean uh, this this was just sent to me from a pretty reliable source i don't know if this is the actual email or not i can't confirm for sure but i mean jimmy that's your i mean do looks you pretty, looks pretty legit and i mean do you trust this person 
Uh, we'll talk. Can we can we visit this on the other I mean, side of the have, break? No, we have like 15 minutes until the other side of the break. Yeah, we'll get back to it. Jimmy, it's fine. It's fine. Why what did, is this? Why didn't you just not say anything? It's a tease. It's a possibility. We we may or may not have the email. Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anybody else you wanted to book yeah. while we're here? Yeah. Oh boy. Uh, what a goofball. Yeah. Uh, Mikey Mike says. All I said is you may be able to get it. You're the one that asked me. Yeah, I'm, I know, but <laughs> you just said you have the email, so I'm asking you how much you trust this person and if you want to go with it on the air. Because if you do, I mean, we could absolutely do that. I think we should hold off for right now. Okay. I'm, I'm confirming with another person. Okay. All right. Well, so we might have an email. Maybe. We or might. we might not. It's Schrodinger's email. We might have an email. We might not. Uh, so going back to the uh, question, or Steve says, with the benefit of hindsight, I'd say the worst day in program history was the day Osborne decided to retire. Yeah, certainly a uh, certainly yeah, that's, a bad that's where I'm at. That's that kind of was the one. first domino, wasn't it? Yeah, it's has not been the same since. Uh, the pack says breaking news one year from now, Trev Halbert targets Matt Rule to take over head coaching duties at Texas A and M. Uh, Aisha and Joe, I'm not going to read that email or that tweet because it's very very sad. JD says, worst day in athletics history was the canceling of the 2020 football season. But see, they brought back the football season. Yeah. So the football season ended up returning. Um, you know, so in the end, I mean, it, it it was a it was a decision they made, but this isn't going to be undone. What if Scott Frost is the new AD? Then the person that removed him is gone. Never expect anything good to happen again. Uh, email coming in. Matt writes. Hey, uh, serious hire Barry Alvarez, athletic director and head coach, Wisconsin, and made Wisconsin the new Nebraska. Go for it. Andy is a former Husker football player. He is super old, but sometimes you get a new People pope forget. in the short term to stabilize and boost football. That would be a atrocious decision <laughs> in, in my estimation. I think that that would be awful. I think that that would be a really, really bad move. I also don't think that that is anywhere near uh, a possibility of happening. I don't think that it is anywhere. Kevin Kugler threw out an interesting... Bruce Rasmussen. That, yeah, and I think that would be really interesting for a guy that obviously has done a lot, not with football, mm -hmm. people forget, but was able to build a very successful athletic department at Creighton, what that would look like. And would there be National Jasker Day <laughs> if that mm -hmm. were to occur? I think that, if I mean, see now, Bruce, uh, you know, let me look up his age real fast, kind of like what we were just talking about. Yeah. Not with, a spring chicken. Not a spring chicken at all. He's 73, yeah. I uh, mean, uh, look... Oh, he could almost be president. Maybe even is like the inner. <laughs> I mean, it's certainly, I, I would like the idea of stabilizing things, and I think Bruce Rasmussen did a hell of a job uh, at Creighton. The big issues with him um, would be that he's, you know, he worked at Creighton, so thus not a football school. So right. He wasn't hiring a foot, you know, football coaches. Trev Alberts also though worked at a school. All kidding aside, where he canceled football mm. and uh, and wrestling, and then he was able to make a hire of a football coach that I do think is a really really good one. So that that you know shouldn't be a reason that you don't hire somebody. Um, but we'll see. Joel uh, in Iowa brings up a name that I know a lot of other people are going to say. And his name came up when Trev got hired, and that was Jamie Pollard, mm -hmm. who is in Ames, Iowa. Nick, I was say, do you think that any experienced AD would want to jump into this perceivable dumpster fire? Do you think it'll be someone who's a brand new to the AD game? It's a great question, Nick, because uh, at this moment in time, there is no president. That, so, and that's going to have to happen first, in my yeah. opinion. Because I don't, uh, to, Nick. To your point, I don't think there's anybody that would take this job while that chair that's, is That's open. why I'm thinking it would have to be somebody who's never been an AD before, so they don't know what they're getting. Well, into. Not even. No, I don't think anybody would take this job without knowing who their boss was. That'd be a really tough look, especially for uh, a, a project that's this big for a university that has this many moving parts. I I don't even think somebody that's never been an AD before would take that job without knowing who their boss was going to be. Yeah. So I mean, so that's a problem. Um, Jim and O'Neill says Jamie Pollard first call. Uh. So you have that as an issue right there. On the other end, if you want to go at it from the positive perspective, of course, the uh, monetary component will be very, very high. Um, look, I, I do think that it's okay. You know, talking about worst days, I, I agree with you, ultimately. In hindsight, we're, we're not going to know the answer to that question for years from now. But good God, do they need to get somebody in here and make sure that everything is going to be fine. There is the football stadium component that is going to hover over, over everything. Yeah, what, there is what the, happens with there that? There is the Matt Rule component that is going to hover over, over everything. Which are you more worried about? Uh, I don't care. I mean, I, to be fair, I would say I don't care about the football stadium right now. And I would say it's making sure that, you know, Matt Rule feels comfortable with, yeah. with things moving forward. I just, I, I, it would be hard to believe that if they, from an on-the-field perspective, if they got things heading in the right direction, we're talking nine, ten wins next season that this would be enough for him to want to leave. Like, if things are going well, 
it'd be hard for me to think that it would just be like, all right, we'll see you later. Uh, we're going to take a break. Uh, we will have some content coming up at the bottom of the hour so we can get to some other things that we were planning on getting to today. Uh, we'll catch our bearings. If you want to give us a call, you can do so right now. 402-951-1620, 877-951-1620. Trev Alberts is leaving. Trev Alberts is going to Texas A&M, uh, as reported by everybody, uh, essentially, that covers the team. And, and I've been able to confirm with uh, multiple sources that that is indeed the case. Uh, that he is moving on to Texas A&M. If you would like to give us a call uh, or if you would like to write cuss words, you can do the latter on our YouTube page or Twitter. Mm -hmm. But if you want to give us a call, please do keep the F words and S words to a minimum. Pretty by minimum, I mean zero. No, none at all. Tony writes F and then it looks like about 15 exclamations. Can I get an F in the chat? Please? Yeah, indeed. Can I get an F in the can chat? Can we get an F? <sighs> Trev Alberts is leaving. Back after this on The Zone. Oh, Josh Peterson, Jimmy Allen with you on this Wednesday. If you are just joining us, if you missed it, Trev Albert is going to Texas A&M. Belmont Bill asks, what's the point? Man, 
I I can't fault people for feeling that way, but I mean, we've all like I, I always try to look at this from my perspective, my life experiences, right? And I think we've all been in a situation where you've been at a place where you've lost a boss that you felt comfortable with. And it just makes everybody and everything else kind of uneasy about the situation. And obviously that's what happened with Ted Carter. And like, I know it's hard to think that your probably nine to five situation is very similar to the athletic director at Nebraska, but I mean, it's not really, it's, it's comfortability. It's being, it's believing in the place you're at. And it's probably far fetched to think about Trev Alberts, not feeling that way about Nebraska, but clearly that's the case. Uh, Alex Lingus is probably worse of what it means. Big picture where our leadership is at. And yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, it, it oh, man. Just when I continue to think about things moving forward and uh, what this means. And yes, as Aaron also says, tough look for the Grumball. I mean, that's the thing that the Grumball's just dead now, right? It is. Which Wait, suck. Okay, can I? Can I R.I.P. Just play it one more time. Yeah, sure. Yeah, uh, we got the email. We were able to confirm with a couple of different sources. Uh, Trev Alberts wrote, "Husker staff, I'm writing to inform you that earlier today, I informed interim president." I'm not going to try to say it, uh, that I am resigning <laughs> my position as director of athletics to accept the same role at Texas A&M. I'm very sorry for the timing and that I was not able to communicate these changes to you in person. Thank you so much for all that you have done to make Husker athletics so special. I'm grateful for all that we accomplished together and believe that because of you, Nebraska is well positioned for the evolving changes within our industry. Tough decisions will need to be made. Unity of vision and high execution will be necessary, but I'm confident the leadership in Nebraska will rise to the occasion, Nebraska Athletics is full of high character, hardworking, and talented staff and coaches. It was an honor to get to partner with you to experience unprecedented success. Thank you again. How fast is he going to Texas if he's not able to get everybody together and tell them in person? Why does it have to be through an email? Because in a situation like this, Nick, it's really fast-moving parts. I mean, I, I can't even count on one hand how many times... When Frost got hired, he was like, the timing of these decisions, the timing of these decisions. Well, I mean, part of it, yeah, it's just it's, since it's being reported. Right. You know, he's they, they just, you know, in these types of situations, they just want to get the news out as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, text from the 402 says, Nick, slow down the grumble so that it's sad. Let's sad get a grumble. sad final. Like the happy hours on the air, sad grumble. Instead of them hitting the ground, it's just plopping. Yeah. Michaela says, this is embarrassing. Uh, Josh says, when Rule and his players leave, who the hell would we hire without someone to hire them and someone to hire who hires them? That is going to be the question. Who is going to hire? Who is going to hire? <laughs> who watches the Watchmen? Who is going to hire? Who's going to hire the person who hires? Man, I, 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 I hate to say that. Like, I'm, I'm not surprised, but I mean, it's, it's one of those things that, like. Is being is being from the is having your name up in the ring of fame enough? Like, is is that enough to keep somebody somewhere? I don't, I don't think it is. No, I mean the answer is obviously no, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, I don't know if there's anything to learn from today. It could be you don't need to like stop caring about that stuff. Yeah, that's you know? it's obviously the least important part. Like, of it. it sucks, right? Like that doesn't that that's not the part that bothers me. Um, the part that. That's not the part that I, I want to think about. It's like, wow, the alum left. It's just like, I thought Happer put it incredibly well earlier on on the crossover when he said, like, he's not done. Matt Rule right now is not done. Or excuse me, uh, tr we'll see what we say about him. Yeah, hopefully uh, he's not done. Yeah, that was a slip. Um, but he was i didn't think See, that he was done he there were so many things that were left to do start with the stadium obviously you know the next thing that i would say is football really getting on solid ground bc mentioned it a few minutes ago i think that they're going in the right direction i believe that they're going in the right direction i believe that basketball is going in the right direction we don't know if that's the case we don't know if that's the case. And so he is not there right now um, to see that through. You know, uh, I know I already mentioned the stadium. There is a lot of other stuff that's going on, too, of course, behind the scenes. And you wonder, you know, what's going to happen with all of, of those things. So that's the part that really, really blows. That was is the that it's just that stuff's not done. That was the feedback that I was the most confused by by people asking us today. Was like, do you feel like it, it? Maybe he just feels like he wants to go like start over and, and and build something from the ground up again. It was like, 
we're still on the ground here. Like, what, like it, it doesn't feel like that at all. Like, he still has a lot of things that he put on the table, the stadium project in particular, that was kind of his baby and his design that never got anywhere. And football, yeah, it looks like it's heading back in the right direction, but they had another five and seven season a year ago. And are, are we willing to just say, well, he was really happy with Fred Hoiberg's season this year, and that's why? I, I don't think so. Uh, Katie says, the irony of this uh, all after Nebraska fans spent the last month saying Mac hated Creighton and was leaving is amazing. It, it's funny that Katie brings that up because – Earlier today, one of the things that I thought about was the Creighton situation over the last month. Because, look, I think that, the, I mean, I believe, because I was told by people I trust, that was all very real. And, and the negotiations that were happening behind the scenes, but also there were negotiations that were happening in public. Yeah. Um, and that's why Greg McDermott was doing so many interviews with so many different outlets, whether it's part of my take, whether it's Scott Van Pelt, it, that was all real. That was happening, and ultimately, they were able really to, happening in front of our eyes. They, bingo! They were able to figure out how to make it work. Greg McDermott is back at Creighton. He signed a deal that is going to pay him a ton of money. And while he is getting a raise, it wasn't just about that. It was about other stuff going on behind the scenes, and he was able to get that. And I don't know exactly. I don't know exactly what. Uh, Trev Alberts was hoping for and um, wanting. I have some ideas, a couple of things that, uh, uh, I, you know, I have. Apparently some other people do too. <laughs> no, yeah. Uh, but certainly the president and what was going on there, I'm guessing that that played a part, of course. But they were not able to figure it out. And it's funny. One of the things that you said as this show began, as we started the crossover, was the longer this lasts, can that be good for Nebraska? And certainly by the time that we got to the four o'clock hour, we are seven hours removed from the first story breaking. And we're like, wow, could this end up being good for Nebraska where he is using it all as leverage? And whether he was or not, the answer in the end is he's leaving. And so it yeah. doesn't really matter. And I, I think if you want to take a positive away from this, and it might it may be hard to at, at this time, is like if it, it, it appears that Nebraska made a made a a concentrated effort to try to keep him like, I, I don't know why else it would have went into this late of an hour, unless there was obviously somebody somewhere trying to make, uh, you know, a, an effort to make sure that they did everything they could to keep Trevor Alberts. And it, apparently there just wasn't enough to, to make that happen. Uh, Kyle, as I always call him noted Wisconsin fan, Kyle says Nebraska fans have been so much about the Michigan man type hire. Time to move on from that type of thinking. No one needs to understand Nebraska. They need to come in and do the job just like any other university. A, I agree. I couldn't agree more. B, what's funny about the hiring of Trev Alberts is I never thought that it was a it was not a good boy good old boy hire. You know, it didn't feel that way. It did, it certainly never felt that way to me. I thought that that hire happened for a variety of reasons. You know, some were that other people perhaps weren't as interested in the job as they would have hoped that they were. Um, the other is they went back to him, but it was not because he's a former Husker. I think that it certainly helped that he was a former Husker in terms of a lot of the things that he was able to do. But I agree. I, you know, that's the positive. I, as I always say, when I said at the end of the Frost era, I'll say it, I guess, now at the end of the, the Trev Alberts era. Like, you don't have to think that way. You don't have to think that way, that that is, you know, what it is going to be or that that's what you need and so, some people kind of have the opposite approach of maybe we need something different to make it feel different around here and i know a lot of people hated that with bill callahan but maybe enough time has been removed from the good old days that there needs to be some change well that's the funny thing i mean they've tried it every way yeah they've had an athletic director that's not from here they've had an athletic director that felt like he was from here and bill moose but wasn't they've had tom osborne they've had trev alberts they have yeah. tried it every every which way they yeah. had bill Byrne, and it's funny the most successful athletic director of my lifetime though i barely remember the bill Byrne era was bill Byrne, but he wasn't really appreciated at the time because him and tom osborne butted heads yeah Let's go to the phones. Tim is up at the uh, 42 Degrees of Source hotline. Tim, what's going on? Tim? Tim? Tim's gone. Tim? Good talking to you, Tim. Tim is gone. Tim is Sad. Gone. Uh, a text from the 402. Did Jimmy just say the good news is that people tried to get Trev to stay, but he still didn't? Does Jimmy know what good news is? They came to Trev with tears in their tears eyes. Tears in their eyes. Big, strong men with tears in their eyes. I mean, it's just a positive takeaway that they didn't just fold and say, all right, see you later. Like, I, 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 think, that is, I think that is a positive. 
that it wasn't just a roll over show your belly button. The positive boys. Uh, boys. boys. So we said I said 605. It is now official from Texas AM at 520. Trev Alberts has been hired at Texas AM. Welcome to Aggie Land. I will read from the statement that they just put out. Uh, Texas AM president Mark A. Welsh the third. Good lord. Has like named, the most Texas A&M name ever. Has named Trev Alberts as his new director of athletics, an All-American University of Nebraska football player who served in AD roles in Nebraska for the past 15 years. Uh, I'm going to skip ahead. Past, that makes how oh, that makes it sound like he's not actually the active AD. I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to skip ahead past a lot of his accolades and what he has done. Uh, here is a quote from Welsh: "With Trev's expertise." The Aggies are poised to not only excel on the fields, tracks, and courts, but also successfully navigate the multifaceted intersection of sports, commerce, and student-athlete empowerment. He has a profound understanding of the intricate business of athletics and the evolving landscape of college athletics, particularly in the realm of NIL. He added, I can't imagine a better individual to lead the Aggies athletics program into the future. Uh, let's find some quotes from Trev. Uh, from my perspective, there has never been a more consequential time in history for higher education and the evolving landscape of intercollegiate athletics. Leadership matters now more than ever before. My interest in Texas A&M is not only due to its prestigious reputation, but also because of President Welsh's compelling vision, in which I believe athletics can play a small but important role in helping Texas A&M achieve unprecedented success. Uh, they write in the release, leaving his beloved alma mater will be bittersweet, Albert said. Uh, back to Trev. I truly want to express my gratitude to the University of Nebraska. The school and its fans have been and always will be immensely important to me. Nebraska changed my life, and I'm thankful for the incredible 15 years I spent here. I Let's see. Uh, and then a quote from R.C. Slocum, who is their interim athletic director. So there you go. He is going yeah, to... And- the uh, Texas, Texas, A&M. Texas A&M University official uh, Twitter page has tweeted it out as well. Yeah. It's, man. I, mm. <laughs> I I think everybody was afraid of this situation, like if it didn't work out, but I, I don't think anybody could have pointed at this and said, well, if it feels like it's going well, he'll probably leave. Like I don't like people have said that at nauseum about Matt Rule, but never once about Trev Alberts. Yes, I didn't think that he would leave. Yeah, I... He, I, just because he talked about how much he loved this place and how much he wanted to be here, and uh, to be a fly in that wall would have been amazing to figure out like what, like the the like the big reasons why. Maybe we'll get that. Maybe we won't. Josh, when was the last off season where we didn't have something that'll just carry Never, us on Nick. to the Never, next season? I mean, honestly, it would. It, I know that we joked about last year and John and Happer bringing about the the bad with the uh the whole training table no, but even then it was all matt rule speculation leading up to his first year yeah. oh first i see season. what you mean okay like we've never like i feel like in my time here then there's just that, always been something it was just frost Can't before we just have, that it was martinez before I mean, that it yeah. was riley can yeah. we just have a chill summer well yeah if you want a chill summer never it's never happened before. maybe i should go to a m yeah never happened before back to the phones we go kelly is up next kelly what's going on oh not much you yeah you know just talking just saying words <laughs> Hey, uh, I'll, I'll just let you know where I'm coming from. I have not been an Alberts fan since he got rid of wrestling at UNO. So have I missed part of the story about the UNO new AD wondering where some finances went with the old guy? Uh, you're, 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 talking about, you're talking about the... the that gone the, away? No, I mean, it's still out there. And we've, we've hit on it a couple of times today. We haven't done like a deep dive back into it, Kelly. But yeah, that you're talking about the Flatwater Free Press story from back in November, right? Yeah, and I'm, and I'm kind of wondering, is he uh, running from that? Kelly, it's, I mean, it's a trip. again, I am not an Alberts fan. Yeah, yep. <laughs> no, Kelly, thank you for the call. I mean, we, so I, I said this, Jimmy, to BC a little bit earlier, and I can just kind of re, re-describe it now. So I, I kind of put things into two separate buckets. So in one bucket was the, the story about UNO and those fundraising, which uh, we were just talking about with the caller. Right. There was the fundraising for the stadium project, which I was told, I mean, within minutes of that flat water free press story going to print, I received a note from someone that said, this is going to be problematic for Trev raising money because people are going to be wary to give him money let's play this. and why wouldn't it right exactly I mean. and and before we move on we're gonna play a clip from trev this was on the husker online podcast 
uh, within the last week or so? There's a lot that impacts it. Obviously, you know, we, we don't we don't have a president right now. And, uh, you know, there, there is an impact to the university there. And so um, probably would be good for us at some point to get that figured out. So, you know, I think that th what I was hearing in November is a, is very founded given the tone in which he has there. So I also added into this bucket the lawsuit that came out recently involving the Nebraska women's basketball team. So like there is all that stuff that's just kind of there. And then, of course, the, the general leadership issues. And I know a lot of people have opinions on the current board of regents and the lack of a president. So like there were those two buckets. And my question was like, where were the concerns? Where was Trev's concerns? And I think that's essentially what the caller is asking. Is it about the bucket one that has some of those stuff or is it about the bucket two? Obviously, as with everything in life, it, the answer is both. Yeah, as I was gonna say, there's a real, real situation where it's all of the above. Yeah. I mean, uh, when you have when you and, and listen, just think about everything we just said in the last five minutes. It's only been like a two year span where all this stuff has kind of come about. And, and on top of that, you've had a fire, basically the chosen one that didn't pan out, too. So it's not like you can look at this short amount of time. And say, well, he's only been here you know, a handful of years. It's been a very tumultuous, 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 tumultuous. Thank you. A uh, handful of years. And he's had a lot to deal with. Uh, Ross writes, Trev reminds me of when Hulk Hogan turned heel and joined the NWO. Mm, or pack for, for life. life. <laughs> uh, Nick asked the question about the chill off season. Severe has a year. He oh. says of all the years, 2016. Oh. Now that was an interesting off season. Cause there are a lot of people that doubted. Um, how real Nebraska was. Yeah, and I thought correctly. that they were actually going to be good. I thought that they were going to win nine games that year. Uh, rightfully so, I might add. But I wouldn't describe that offseason as like super chill because people hated Riley. Like it was a mm. debate about him every day that whole offseason. But I mean, it because he wasn't in Nebraska. It guy. did feel fairly normal compared to this. Hmm. Did feel fairly normal yeah. compared to this. Thank Poll you, question. Michael. I look forward to this new video. Poll question. Do you miss Mike Riley? Uh, <laughs> God. I mean, and look, there are a lot of people. Let me let me read. Uh, Shane writes, stadium project slash rule. That's the subject line. Project is dead. Rule leaving after next season. Cook retires and Fle Fred leaves. Amy resigns and Will leaves at the end of the season. Like, good God. That is some uh, negativity. He went to negative town. Negative with that, boys. The negative boys. 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 But, I, I mean, I don't know what's next now. Uh, a text from the 402 quoting a very particular... <laughs> lyric from team america <laughs> that they asked the terrorists to do to them that i will not read on the air oh, go ahead but then he adds good riddance Every, yeah. everything's falling apart anyway yeah hot danger on youtube ad hot, hot prime danger. oh good lord all right nick what do you i i give you i will acquiesce to you nick are we putting content or are we taking ben's call and reading other reactions i think the responsible thing to do is to take Ben's call and reading other reactions. All right, Ben, you stay right there. We will get to your call and we will get to other comments on YouTube. And then Jimmy will have two more hours to talk about this tonight. We will. We are definitely, believe it or not, in after hours, we will be talking about this. Hopefully John Schreiner can get here on time. He's call calling Creighton softball. Guys, oh, no. So. Is it going into extras? Uh, I, I Last time I checked, they were up by a bunch, so it should okay. be fine. All right. Well, also, maybe, maybe we, they got run ruled. Uh, we haven't had one of these yet today. An up Duke. Yeah. In the top of the eighth, Duke leads Ryder 13 runs to four. There you go. Duke is back, baby. I was right about him all along. All right. More to come. 
Winding down on a Wednesday, Josh Peterson, Jimmy Allen with you. By the way, I just had a uh, shout out to a, a great source. Just had someone drop me the renderings of what the Memorial Stadium construction product uh, project rather would or will still look like. I'm guessing not so much. Um, this will uh, be quite the... Uh, quite the back burner now so i just tweeted those out if you want to see uh this from somebody inside of nebraska for what they were going or what they're planning to do uh we also sent out the email a little bit earlier as well um what trev albert said to nebraska but if you are just joining us wow do we have some news for you welcome into the search trev alberts isn't going to be nebraska's athletic director anymore what he is moving to texas a&m uh, simple sauce. He says it's okay to feel betrayed by everyone, right? Trev, Regents, etc. Yeah, feel free. Feel free to be feel betrayed by whomever I, you would like. I said this to you guys off the air, but I think it's fair to say that this fan base has a, some abandonment issues. Not necessarily like I had to say and this, this like in a not <laughs> negative way, but like for reasons like for, this. For, yeah. yeah, for proper reasons. Sadly, and I, I think that's why this one hurts the most, right? Because it's 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 somebody that was one of ours, and his name's up in the ring of the fame, ring of fame, and and. and had, had things looking in a positive direction and we've never really had this situation where things look like it's on the up and up and somebody leaves it's i just had somebody say that out. to me what you just did jimmy uh, where it said i think there's more despair because he's a former player than because he's irreplaceable for the job and i like i mean i, I say it all the time there's you can always find somebody you're always going to be able to find somebody to be the next whomever um, I get why this hurts, just like I get why Scott Frost hurts or hurt because you wanted him to be the guy. You wanted Treb to be the athletic director that brought Nebraska back because he is one of you. I get it. Um, obviously, he had different ideas. Back to the phones we go. Ben is up next. He's been waiting on hold. Ben, hello. Oh, no. Is Ben, ben gone? Ben's gone. Ben what? is gone. Ben. What has been happening? You know what? We'll go down to the ATL. Robert from Atlanta. Robert, what's up? Yeah, good evening, guys. In hey. traffic in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm a class of 96, GBR all the way. I have to tell you, I've been listening to this since this morning, just like you all have. This is a, a very pathetic day on many levels. Uh, from a public relations, from a business administration standpoint, this was handled about as poorly as it gets. Textbooks. Uh, there should be a class on how to how to make sure that when hell breaks loose, uh, that at least you see a little bit of a uh, blue heaven. Secondly, uh, I don't know if Trev Alberts has ever been to College Station, but he's got a rude awakening when he gets there. It's not a nice place. Mm. Thirdly, uh, as we move forward here uh, in uh, how we're going to pick up the pieces, uh, in my humble opinion, it is paramount uh, that our head coach of football, Matt Rule, uh, get together with uh, his cohorts tonight and figure out exactly what the message is moving forward. Not only uh, for the sake of his winning and his football team and his players and recruitment, but he has got to get this message right. And lastly, I'm just going to say this right now. Could you pick a worse time, Trev, to do this I know, right? right before both basketball teams are about to embark on, on very great years into their tournaments? Uh, really disappointing time, guys. Yeah, that's, Robert, thank you, man. And and dude, I could not agree with point. you more. It's funny because we we all day long, we thought that that was going to be the case. And then it seemed like, oh, maybe not. It's a nice swerve. And we talked about that exact thing with Brian Christofferson about an hour ago of like, this timing sucks because Nebraska's men's team is two days away from playing in the Big Ten tournament and over a week away from playing in the NCAA tournament. The women's team is over a week away from playing in the NCAA tournament. And this happens. And I get it. Like, I'm, this is not me saying, you're you're a jerk for leaving now. Like, I get it. I understand. He's got to do what he's got to do. Right. But wow. is the Also, timing... Texas A&M doesn't care. Yeah, exactly. 100%. Yeah. So this is not me being mad at them. for the... It's just, this sucks. This absolutely sucks for Nebraska and for everybody involved. There was such a calm in the waters because it felt like, because obviously Nebraska is what moves the needle around here. Yes, it sucks for the men's and women's basketball team, but we're talking about the bottom dollars. It comes from the football program. And there was so much of a, a steadfast and we, we believe in the process because it felt like there was a guy at the top that understood how that works and that he was, he wasn't going to leave for any reason. And now it's, 
even more of an unknown. I think there's a lot of question marks around why there hasn't been a president named. And, and you have to wonder if that does come from the board regions and, the, and that being the main reason. Does somebody want this job? Uh, Aaron texts in, I'm going to say this, and people can take it however they want because they will. This is politics playing out in real time, and unless you change that at the top, it's not going to change that. This isn't Frost being incompetent. This is really bad. Yeah, the, the Frost uh, reasons for him failing are so like easy to see, sure. You know, in the whether it's in the moment or with the benefit of hindsight. This is going to stick in the craw of some people in a much different way. And along those lines, a couple other comments that I saw. One was our friend Jack Mitchell. He's uh, tweeted a couple of times in the last half hour. Go He's, back on vacation, Jack. He said, yeah, poor guy. He says, bitter. How could you all not make this work? It's an embarrassment. I want to say so much more. What a sad year for NU losing talent. I hope some leaders who are not annoying state politicians and care about this university are about to rise up. Rudderless. He adds, I have a diploma here. I have a child attending. I live and die with this place's success. Get your bleep together, and if someone is pre preventing you from doing that, tell us. Uh, Sky writes in, the same reason the Trev thing hurts a little more is the same reason you still have people defending Frost. And that goes back to what you said a few minutes ago, Jimmy, and that is the idea of not only is he one of you, not only is he, even though he's from Iowa, not only is he a former Husker, his name is on the damn stadium. And that is, I understand why this hurts people more than Bill Moose failing, or even Steve Peterson turning into what he turned into. He was a former Husker. He was a guy inside those walls during the glory days. His name's not on the stadium. This call. is the guy that was just rushing the floor with the head football coach just a month ago against Purdue. Yep. Like, it, and I think that's why everybody was so caught off guard about this because, other than him you know, talking to obviously Sean and Sip in that in that video clip that we played there really wasn't really any signs of frustration and maybe that's a tip of the cap to trev for being professional up until this point but it, it's it's just caught so many people off guard for that reason there just hasn't been any warning signs yeah so wow uh and again if you missed the uh email uh trev wrote husker staff i'm writing to inform you that earlier today i informed interim president that i am resigning my position as director of athletics to accept the same role at Texas A&M, I'm very sorry for the timing and that I was not able to communicate these changes to you in person. Thank you so much for all that you have done to make Husker Athletics so special. I'm grateful for all that we accomplished together and believe that because of you, Nebraska is well positioned for the evolving changes within our industry. Tough decisions will need to be made. Unity of vision and high execution will be necessary, but I'm confident that leadership in Nebraska will rise to the occasion. Uh, Nebraska Athletics is full of high character, hardworking, and talented staff and coaches. It was an honor to get to partner with you to experience unprecedented success. Thank you again. Uh, you know, obviously, we can we can read into this however way we want, but I'm confident that leadership in Nebraska will rise yeah, to the are occasion. You? <laughs> yeah. Then why did you leave? That you know? so when we were talking earlier about it, uh, how confident was I that 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 is actually the reason I was like, let's wait and see if we can get confirmation from this. But yeah, it, it's one of those things that. Uh, it, it seems really hypocritical, right? I mean, you're obviously leave, leaving for leadership reasons. You can't really uh, champion them on the way out the door. Yeah, Sam writes, unprecedented success. Yeah, that's the other part that I would uh, pick a bone with. Unprecedented success. If this is unprecedented success, yes, what do you mean if they actually the did something? Yeah, if this is the ceiling, my God. Remember this time yesterday when we were talking about sloppy Joes? And how the shoe never dropped? And how everything was roses and, and rainbows? I do. I like what I, a time yesterday was. I bet you like sloppy now, don't you, Josh? Uh, no, no, no. So I don't like sloppy joes. I'm hey, just... those sloppy joes we had yesterday were actually really good. Were they banger sloppy they joes. They were really good. Smoke eater replies to my tweet about the grumball dying. Says big time. Yeah, yeah I, I think we might need to retire it. Wow, people Hang hate up. Trev now too. By the way, yeah. whoa, yeah, people yeah. are not a fan of this guy, Nick. People, yeah. I saw. The dam leaking a little bit throughout the day. I'd see comments here and there, oh, but yeah. now the dam is fully broken. The uh, the we shouldn't have hired Frost guys are definitely the I told you since he canceled wrestling at UNO. Well, guys yeah, are, and, and look, I, in full effect. I would say that there were more uh, anti Trev people than there were anti Frost people, and so shout out to you, you the real ones, because you were right. Yeah, the, he lasted three, mm -hmm. not even three years. It's true, not even three years. Uh, simple sauce T. I couldn't care less about Trev being a former player. He seemed to be the calming force, and he's the one rocking the boat. Well, and and I forgot the caller's name, but the guy that just called in, it's a great point. Like Robert the, from Atlanta. Yeah, the timing of doing this Thank when you, Robert. when you when you know what the history of the men's basketball program has done, and they have this opportunity coming up to just not see it through, I think is going to rub people out the wrong way a lot. 
uh, a text from Chris in Montana, 1620, acting like therapists again for the fan base. Gra- grab a seat on the couch. We got you. And then he has great show, guys. Thank you. After you want to hear something really funny? After Hours has two more hours after this, so stick around with us. So the last season of the Frost Era, when I was producing this fine grum, yep. I had a little note in my phone of something that I would get to eventually that I just haven't yet because, you know, it hasn't taken priority. Sure. All it's written on it is Husker Therapy. Mm. It's going to be this whole... This whole thing. There you go. Breaking news. We have a new name for Big Red Overreaction. Now I guess that's going to have to be a priority again. By the way, I did want to read this very funny comment on our YouTube page from Heath a little over an hour ago. Hi, Heath. I never got to it. I was going to read it to start Dumb Debates, but mm. we canceled it today. Mm. Dumb Debates was canceled. And we had some Are we moving real... it to tomorrow? No one's ever no. going to know okay. about Garrett Cole and the Yankees. What? We had some really good Dumb Debates questions. By the way, depending on the day that John leaves next week, Michael Severe might be here for them. Oh, severe debates. Uh, Heath writes, Kate Middleton, this is quoting you. Okay. Kate Middleton has been missing for months, and now Trev is said to go to Texas A&M. Coincidence? I think not. Mm, Jimmy, Jimmy Allen. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> that does sound like something you would say. Maybe, maybe that'll be the new chief of staff. Kate Middleton will be the... Oh, boy. <laughs> that's where she's been. She's been busy trying to get Trev Alberts to Texas A&M. Uh, Mikey Mike says, Trev canceled football at UNO and has a 40% winning percentage of football games as AD at Nebraska and people acting like we lost to Jesus Christ? Oh. Question mark. Yeah, the uh, again unprecedented success. I'll uh, I will pick yeah, a we'll, fight. I'll pick a bit of a fight we'll with punt him. Punt on that, yeah. yeah <laughs> I'll pick a uh, bit of fight. Uh, one more before we go to break, and this is from our uh, uh, sister station KLIN, Caleb Henry, who is their uh, radio director, there, program director, and sports director. He says, "Where's the University of Vision in Husker athletics right now? You have head coaches and their staffs doing extremely well, but now you have." No AD. The UNL chancellor is no longer involved in an interim system president after months of searching. What are the regents doing? That is certainly going they don't to know. be the uh, yeah. <laughs> that is the question. I that don't think seems to be the case, Nick. And, and vibing it out. They yeah. are indeed vibing it out. It, it just feels like there's really no direction right now, which is why the leadership comment from Trev is the, the, the most head scratching part of that email for me. Like, uh, what leadership? Like, who, who is he referring to? Because you have an interim president. You have a board of regents. I believe three that have been all been vo- three that have been voted in the last two years. Right? Like it's there's a ton of new faces around there, and not great. Uh, Zachary says, "I knew it was over as soon as I saw that grum ball. I should have kept the grum ball to myself. Mm. I should have kept it to myself. Instead, I was right about the original prediction in this game. Oh, congrats uh, on being yeah, right, yeah. Josh. Josh was right. You still find a way to not be wrong. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bow to me, everybody. <laughs> weren't, you the, weren't you the one on Happer for playing both sides earlier? Uh, shut up. Yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, when thought. we return, uh, we can get to some final comments. We will mention what's for dinner as well. And hopefully the answer it's is mostly not, tears for people. Is, I think yeah, tears is, and beers, tears and beers. All right. So we'll uh, do that. We'll say goodbye and we'll get you ready for after hours with Jimmy Allen. And we'll eat some wings. Yeah. Dan is on his way. He's oh, trying to hustle back. Hell yeah. He should be here soon. All right. We'll do that when we return on 1620 the zone.
When you knock us down, we're going to get up. And on the way up, we're going to bite a kneecap off. Crust is good on your pizza, not your ass. I will eat your ass first. He's tough as a Woolworth steak. And then it's going to take two more shots to knock us down. All right. And on the way up, we're going to take your other kneecap. I'm ready to hang them up, gut them and skin them and chop them up. You know what? I'm ready. My daughters aren't starving to death. I'll eat my neighbors. And we're going to get up and then it's going to take three shots to get us down. And when we do, we're going to take another hunk out of you. Cliff, what's your, what are you going to take away as your best memory from playing basketball at Boston College? Probably just like going on to eat. Jimmy? Yes? What are you having for dinner? I'm having Caddyshack Wings. Oh, Courtesy is it Wing of, Wednesday? It is a Wing Wednesday, which reminds me, I need to sh- sign out our show tweet, letting people know. Oh. If you haven't followed After Hours, go follow us at After Hours 1620. Follow Caddyshack Omaha. We'll let you know drawing hey, away a $25 hey, gift card to Caddyshack Bar and Grill. Promote your show on our show? Not, what is this? Can, Camaraderie, Nick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I promote unsportsmanlike conduct all the time. Handshake meme. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, go retweet it, and you could win wings. It's awesome. Their wings are they're so kick good. ass. Yeah. My favorite wings in town. They're very good wings. Yeah. So uh, that's what he is having. Nick, what do you have? Sushi. Sushi. Yeah. Wow. You got so, a nice date. Couple, couple personal mm-hmm. occurrences in my life that are worth celebrating. Oh, so, Trev leaving. Yep. That's it. I was banking on it. Wow. So. Can I say something to you, Nick Grimm? Yes. You have been noticeably more happy and I'm happy for you. Wow. Thank you. I appreciate that. Wow. Happiness looks good on you, buddy. So I got a few different leftovers, and I'm trying to decide what I want. Between the chicken or the potato? <laughs> no, I, I, I did that uh, for lunch. I oh, did wow. that for lunch yesterday. So I'm trying to decide. I'm thinking, though, I'm thinking I might make a burrito. Oh, Ooh, I've been goodness. really... We, so she Who has access to this, this uh, place that has these massive burrito, like these massive tortillas. Mm-hmm. So then you can make... So when I can make like a breakfast burrito like i could a, put like three whole scrambled eggs in there and a lunch of you other could crap. make like a child i think my favorite burrito. version of a burrito is the breakfast burrito. yeah it's so good and I so it. i think we have a lot of stuff at the house that i could do including some delicious salsa so i'm leaning burrito but brekkie burrito no not not breakfast mm. i don't i don't like doing salsa with the eggs i know that that really makes me really good. i know some i love do. salsa with eggs salsa yeah. verde with eggs my god yeah, that's not how i Very roll good. so uh yeah that's what's for dinner. Let us know what's for dinner. Uh, many people are saying tears. Yeah, I, I clearly have been talking too much about Trev Alberts today because I just went to go send out the tweet and I said, follow us, follow Nebraska. Oh, nice. <laughs> Not Caddyshack. Omaha. Make sure you follow Caddyshack. I think Omaha. anyone wants to follow Nebraska yeah. right now. Don't no. follow Trev Alberts. Text from the uh, 605, which is South Dakota. This isn't bad because Trev is leaving. This is bad because Nebraska couldn't keep him. I think that that is a very good way a good point. to describe it. Um, I am very curious to see what the uh, kind of discourse is in the next 20 hours before we are back on the air, and we will be back on the air uh, tomorrow at 2, and before that, you'll have an after hours tonight. You will have the morning show with Ton Gary of and Nick, yeah. and then obviously Happer, and then, yeah, so we can pick up the pieces. I mean, I know that we had some fun in the uh, Grum Down earlier. We did have a variety of topics that we were going to get to. Uh, we will. It seems like a lifetime ago. It does. I don't remember anything that was on the ground down. We will definitely pick up the pieces on this story, um, and we will talk about this some more, um, but we will also try to get to some other things tomorrow. Like Garrett Cole. Uh, like Garrett Cole. Not like Garrett Cole, <laughs> uh, but we, uh, the, Creighton, they'll begin their uh, postseason tomorrow. Nick Saban spoke on Capitol Hill yesterday and said some things that I disagree with. There was uh, some really interesting stuff with Rudy Gobert what? over the last Just week. Th- think about that statement. Nick Saban spoke on Capitol Hill. I am Hill not yesterday. surprised at all that <laughs> coaches are speaking in front of. I- I'm not either, but like just saying that sentence out loud is just it's it's something that's for sure so we will uh talk about that and who knows what else on the uh, show tomorrow robin washer will join us and we're going to effort somebody from texas A&M. um one final up duke yes top of the ninth duke leads rider 18 runs to four there so they go. said no thank you from yesterday there you go my team that i said was going to be good and josh was right again run. wow typical me what was the score yesterday typical me we don't talk about yesterday <laughs> we talk about today trev alberts was the athletic director at nebraska yesterday man i just saw a tweet from a dear friend of the grum and uh someone who has filled in before lanny holstein who mm. now lives out in colorado he says when rule leaves so will riola think about that so he is taking this news not very well, what if Dominic or what if uh, Donnie is the new head coach after R- Rule leaves? 
That would be oh, that would change things, wouldn't it? We're would it not back the Riola coaster? Would it not? That would be bad, Jimmy. That would be bad. What do you have coming up on the show tonight? Uh, we are going to talk to uh, Lucas Gabriel, head men's basketball coach at Bellevue University. They're getting ready to play in the NAIA tournament. Uh, Gina Mancuso, former Nebraska volleyball player, the almost supernovas, will be with us, and uh, we're going to talk about Trev Alberts. Oh, leaving Nebraska. I wonder if you have any opinions on him. We might. We might. All right, stick cool. around, find out. So that's after hours coming up next. Uh, go retweet him as well. You could win some wings. Uh, hey, wings, free beer, free wings, whole lot. I I love both of those things. All right, for Jimmy, for Nick, I'm Josh. Have a great night. After hours is coming up next in uh, the station. Back at it again tomorrow morning at six a.m. Good. Bye.